Orko Oli Bim. And the enigmatic Henry Mush. We had some interesting dreams with common themes, though nobody knows each other had um, similar dreams. We got to see a bit of a day in the life of our wonderful people out here in New Quivershank, this absolute poop hole of a town, a village, a hamlet, a, a stain on the land um, here in the Serrated Isles. Things aren't looking great in New Quivershank, and even before the events of the evening, the much-loved proprietor of Pora Pushkin, Pushkin Soup Ladle himself, was keen to gather um, aspiring folk from the village for a, a serious discussion about what could be done to help what's going on here in New Quivershank. Because here in New Quivershank, the people are beginning to run out of hope. Food is barely maintained by the work of Chuck growing many mushrooms. People eat their mushrooms each day. They don't particularly enjoy them, but they, they eat them to get by. Uh, supply of clean water is enough, but you're not allowed to expand. You're not really allowed to hunt much. Um, everything is dictated by the Sari. A powerful culture here in the Serrated Isles who consider your people, your village, to be invaders barely tolerated for your purpose of being somewhere they can dump any sh shipwreck survivors, really. They don't want to kill people if they don't need to, and so you are allowed, permitted to continue to live in your tiny little stain of a village under the watchful eyes of sorry children, an occasional sleepy look over from a sorry elder and um, barely a glance from the, the one Sari warrior that is deemed needed to keep an eye on your entire village. But, Sari aside, other things were afoot, and some of the group had run-ins with um, some nasty elements of the Fixers, um, a crew in New Quivershank growing in power, that seeks to kind of assert themselves as the, the, the leaders and the people who get things done, who fix problems. Ignis Soot Clench was just such um, an individual, a very large, strong, quite young gif who throws his weight around to get what he wants. And in the evening, as people were, were celebrating in the poor Pushkin, Ignis kicked the door open and demanded that he was going to he would speak to Pushkin alone. You, however, each of you, decided you wouldn't leave. And things escalated rather quickly. Ignis and a couple of ruffians, thinking they could strong arm you all, perhaps give you a bit of a beating, make an example out of you in front of the rest of New Quivershank, quickly had things turn around on them. Special mention to Lorco Olibim, who absolutely brutally dismantled all three of the fixers lying dead and bloody on the floor. One of them even tried to escape, but was chased down and torn into with the incredible savagery exhibited by Lorco. Pushkin, ever the, the wise head, knew that this was bad. Things would change. The fixers would be forced to make some kind of move and most likely would exert their full strength on the four of you. And so he said, this has to be the time. This pushes the, the schedule up quick and the four of you need to escape. You need to get out of New Quivershank away from the, the purview of the fixers and this is the chance that Pushkin was hoping for anyway to get you guys out and away um, to try and find something, anything, a new food supply, a new ally, uh, some source of power that might help give New Quivershank hope once more. And so saying your quick goodbyes to family and friends, you made your way to, uh, well known to the villagers, a gap in the Palisade Wall where you squeezed through. However, as the four of you stepped away from the palisade walls of New Quivershank, you noticed one of your number had stalled. 
Henry Mush stands in place and twitches, the legs of his host body seemingly refusing to move. His sprouting mushroom form slowly swivels back, creaking within the slowly rotting, fleshy bounds of his host. Back towards the gap in the wall you've only just clambered through. Now, I won't do Natalie the disservice of trying to <laughs> do Henry Mush's voice, but Henry Mush, in his trademark tone, says to the three of you, Good luck, everybody. Be nice to each other. I need to make sure Chuck stays okay. On either side of the palisade wall opening now stands Pickbum, the diminutive gnome with sprouting mushrooms on his shoulders, and the much larger form of Herbert Kume. They bow as Henry walks between them, and the two of them, Pickbum and Herbert Kume, Take a couple of steps forward and present each of you with a small, rough fabric bag. One for Lorcor, one for Tiberius, and one for Slug. Oh, I can do this voice. Spread love, says Herbert. Yeah, and find something, says Big Bar. I have. I can make your inventory. A small fabric bag, smaller than the palm of your hand. You head off towards the tree line, past the stumps, and in thick green undergrowth. It is a, um, a, a, a chat, a really good chat about um, and how to speak about the character. And the uh, campaign outside the computer exists in New Shank and is at the partner now and has to work late this eve. Um, so it won't be on until later anyway, but we have a new character all sorted. So we will be four again soon. But for now, it is the three of you. Um, it is uh, late at night. It's probably about midnight. The scene of the great moon is high in the sky, giving you plenty of light to walk by. You're making your way into the tree line. You know that Pushkin has directed you towards the ruined tower of the exiled Sari, which is to your southwest. We should be should be able to see we're on the hex hex grid map of the island. Um, this is the hex grid as known to to your characters and the people of New Quivershank. There may be other things around, but this is what's known to you guys. The ruined tower is just down here to the southwest. You're all not just now moving out of New Quivershank. It is late at night. What would you like to do? What's the furthest we've ever been from this place? It's up to you. I think Lorcor would likely have have been the furthest um, in his hunting. Um, Tiberius, I'm not sure about. Slug, uh, his parents would have definitely warned him about going too far. The Sari are very uh, unhappy if people venture too far out. Essentially, people are allowed freely to the tree line for logging purposes, even though even that is controlled. Um, but anyone who tries to go wandering off into the forest that isn't expressly being given a chance to hunt um, would be punished. Yeah, I guess Tiberius would like, come on everyone, let's get to this sodden little hole before the sorry notice we've gone. Excellent. Um, Slug, oh, yep, go. No, no, I was just going to say, um, I assume that Lorcor would have a pretty good idea of how to get out. Yes, Lorcor having ventured deeper into uh, the jungle <clears throat> before you'd have uh, a good idea indeed mm -hmm. um you will head towards the tree line past some of the the stumps left from the logging operations here outside new quiver shank and before long you're in the dense thick green undergrowth okay. you can move your little travel token until we get a 
a logo or a, a name for the group. We're just going to use this little spyglass for now. Um, but it is uh, late at night. You have all headed off with bits and pieces, whatever you could scrabble together from the village as you were leaving. Are you intending to rest or are you going to push through the night? What's the plan? Hmm. Do we know how dangerous the night is? Um, Lorco, you never would have hunted at night, hunting strictly um, during the day, often in the early hours. So you'd probably, the lot of you, have a pretty um, fearful thought of, like, the jungle at night. The thick canopy blocks out the the broad Cena moonlight, which uh, in the village would mean that night's actually not so bad. It's you know, There's a fair degree of light even when you're outside. But the jungle is dark and deep, full of noises of different creatures around you. Um, Lorcor, you could make an, a nature check or a survival check if you like. Yeah. Just that. thinking in terms of having been hunting and so seeing other predators. 16 is pretty good. Um, yeah, you know that the Serrated Isles, the Sari, though very much settled here take a quite hands-off approach towards nature itself and so the jungles are very much wild there will be predators in here that probably wouldn't chance their luck against the three of you together in the daytime but at night asleep split apart um maybe they would and these are just the things that law Corps can think of um there might be other other nasty stuff inside mm. Okay. But he knows the presence of large reptiles, crocodilian creatures, mm. big cats, um very large insects are well known as well. Um their grubs are often harvested for food. Um there are tales of horrible huge spiders, lots of things. Mm. Um speaking of food, he'll probably be collecting whatever he can along the way. Mm -hmm. as well um but yeah i think he would relay that in a in a law quarry manner very good um, um yeah do any of you have any light sources no i was just trying to have a look see if i had night um mm. but i just have normal vision Uh, I think I got torches. Yeah. Yeah, Tiberius has a good torch. You could light a torch. Yeah. Uh, I think I've got something in my bag, but I haven't sorted out my bag. Let me just have a look at my bag. <laughs> I love the thought of Slug rifling through his little rucksack. <clears throat> yeah, as you light a torch, the 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 welcome warmth and light of the fire is at the end, and you hear some of the nearby animals scurrying away. You see the dense um, uh, vegetation around you looming in. Hmm. At night, we will be eaten. We rest. Where have we gone from the settlement? I would say at the moment you're probably only five, ten minutes into the tree line. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. We need to make sure that sorry don't catch us, though. You ought to get a bit further in, otherwise uh, we'll just be taken back and, I don't know, whipped. <laughs> Loco's not scared of a whip. I don't know, Loco. You're the one who's uh, been out here the most. I, I guess we should defer to you. Um, so if you think it's pertinent to take a rest, maybe we should. Hmm. Loco says rest. Eh? Rested. <laughs> rest it is. With the undergrowth not quite as thick as it might be further ahead, it doesn't take much time to find a small area, especially with it being just the three of you. Um, do you have bedrolls, tents? Um, the the logical the logical thing I put in uh put in to have a tent, but I don't think Lorca would have actually bought one. 
<laughs> ah, but would his mum have put one in his bag? True, true. Don't know. Would she have? She definitely would have. She yeah. cares a lot for Lorco. Andrew says a bed roll. I have a bed roll too. Oh, nice. Well, it's not raining, but it's a nice, clear uh, night, so it's up to you. And it's fairly humid, so the, the temperature's not bad, so it's up to you guys whether you try and ask Lorcor if you can share his tent. He is a pretty big guy. <laughs> or if you'd want to just settle down on your bedroll beneath the canopy. I'm very surprised. I'll keep a lookout, don't worry. Um, maybe you should go in your, uh, the, the tent, little man, as he looks at Slogan. All right. I did pick a pup tent, which is a tent for one person. So... <laughs> <laughs> uh... <laughs> with with Slug being small, I'd say it's completely up to Lorcor if you want to allow him in there, but I would allow Slug in there okay. as well if needed. Yeah. Lorcor will say, You okay. sleep at the bottom. <laughs> oh, cozy. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. So you, you set up your tent, bed yourselves down, it's a squeeze inside the tent, but it's also warm as well, um, as the canvas provides a welcome barrier to the, the unknown outside. Tiberius for you it's a different story. You set yourself up with your your bedroll, but before long you, you feel the occasional thing crawling across your leg. Um hear buzzing insects around your head but you you set yourself to to be on watch this is with a torch as well i assume yeah definitely yeah so you sit there perhaps wedging your torch into the ground so you're not having to hold it the whole time and gazing out uh into the jungle occasionally you do see in fact make a perception check for me please Ooh. Oh, lordy, lordy. Okay. Um, you gaze out into the night and you pick up in, the, in the, the sort of tranquility that's afforded to you here. No one else to bother you. No sorry to worry about. Your mind sharpens, focuses. You manage to spot a number of different creatures as they make their way about the evening. You see um, small, sort of up to your, barely up to your knee, um, jungle cats moving about in the canopy from tree to tree. You see them hunting birds which flutter and fly away if they're lucky, but otherwise are, are downed and killed. Um, you see small amphibians hopping between roots. Um, you see insects climbing trees. You see a small ant co colony that snakes and carries back the, the dead body of one of these frogs back into their little nest to be harvested later on. This jungle is teeming with life around you. Um, with that natural 20, I'll say you notice in particular that one of the, the cats has done very well in the night and seems to have discarded some of its kills. And a few of these bird carcasses lie on the ground, maybe only 10, 20 meters away from you. He doesn't particularly want to get it because he doesn't want the cat to come back and get possessive. <laughs> Very good. You find, as the night wears on and your torch um, dies down, um, no harm comes to you. It seems like you exist in your little pocket and the night itself passes and morning dawns. Um, a new day for you all. You awake achy on the ground. Tiberius managed to slip off to slumber somewhere during the night. But high fire, the sun has crested the horizon, and the light awakes you. Those in the tent, largely untouched. Tiberius, you are crawling with all manner of insects. You've got a slug halfway up your arm, ants in your hair. A spider web has started to be formed between your legs. All manner of, of insects and gribblies. Have you'd made you their home. He'd get a spider web and he'd work it into his hair so it's got some shape. And be like, <laughs> well, we better be off. Uh, 
Light's approaching. Are you up, little boy? Kind of like nudges in with his tail. Sorry, I missed that. What? Lorcan nudges in with his tail. Hmm. Well, I'll get up. Okay. The three of you get up and do your stretches. How are you feeding yourselves? Do we have rations? Are we hunting? Tiberius, you're aware of those birds that fell not far from you? Yeah. yeah. As soon as it's daylight, we'll go mm -hmm. and get the birds. Yeah. Right. I hunted us some breakfast. Don't thank me all at once. <laughs> You give them to Lorcan. I assume he know what to do with these. <laughs> he just eats it more. <laughs> both of them? There's two birds. He has just... Yeah, fuck it, he's eating both birds. <laughs> oh, no, no. Mm -hmm. It's not quite what I meant, but uh, you got a fine appetite. Um... Oh. Uh, did, how did you catch these? Well, uh, I was watching these big cats and they left them there. Oh. Felines prey. Exactly. Uh, we better move before it realises it's gone. I don't know anything about big cats at all. Um, except they're big and they're cats. But apparently he does have two weeks worth of rations on them. Very nice. <laughs> that should be absolutely fine. Um, fantastic. So you pack up... Um, your things shake off the insects. The life of the jungle is even more apparent now. Um, in the light of day, you see the flash of beautiful iridescent um, beetle shells as they crawl along the ground. Um, hear the rustling of, of animals nearby. Um, seeing as you, you, you have a, a bearing, um, I'd like whoever's um, directing the group to make a survival check for me, please. My guess would be Lorcor, but it could be someone else. Yeah, unless anyone has objections, Lorcor would be leading in the front, sort of slashing at bushes, like with his claws to get them out of the way and stuff like that. Fantastic. Uh, yeah. Survival, was it? Survival. Oh, yeah, more than enough. You keep your, your bearing on Lorcor with your slashes and your your hunting instincts though not perfect for this situation because this is a, a marathon rather than a sprint um serve you well you see various trails made by animals that have gone th uh, through the undergrowth in the past and between that and your claws the journey is made a lot easier and you are not slowed in your progress you manage to move quite far <clears throat> about halfway through your journey you come across, and due to your survival role, this is you're fully aware of this, you notice a clearing. And in this clearing, you see a dull yellow glow. And as you um, get close enough to peer inside, you see something known to you, Lorcor. Um, might be known to the other two as well. You could do a nature role for me if you think... Um, your character would know much about bushcraft or the the plants, the f uh, flora here on the aisles. Um, mm. 16, yeah. Um, Lorcor, you, you would know this as this is known as, as a, a prized find out in the jungle. Um, there are glowing um, seeds or fruit that break down and leave these growing seeds still on the bushes um, and trees. They actually grow from these creeper vines that wrap around the larger plants. Um, and they are known to be incredibly nutritious and actually possessing of rejuvenating properties. Um, essentially, you can eat them and regain some health and some vigor um, that you might have expended. Incredibly useful for hunters wanting to travel light. Mm -hmm. You can carry a few of these seeds in your pocket, pop one in your mouth, and feel pretty good to go for most of a day. Um, the clearing in front of you is a treasure trove. It's The whole thing is lit by these lights. But 
not all is well. As you also notice, you rolled well on your survival for today, they're eyeing up, you're not the only ones eyeing up these seeds. There are a number of monkeys hanging down from the trees um, around you. You spot three different monkeys that are looking um, enviously towards the seeds and look ready to pounce upon them. What do you do? Um, Loco just sort of looks up at the monkeys. <sighs> Annoying. Uh, we could try and scare them off with some big noise. I've got my loot. I could thrash something out. Hmm. I, um, what, what, what would local think? Would that think? Would does noise usually work? Uh, yeah, I mean, noise? animals are very much sensitive to noise. These monkeys are smallish. They're certainly not the largest. Um, simian creatures you've seen out in the jungle they look like opportunists um they're already even without having seen you they're tentative to come out into the opening and grab some of these seeds so yeah you think noise might do it mm, may attract other things maybe you could look very big and scary and uh, if anything else comes they'll see your dazzling physique and run away <laughs> Loco does not dazzle. He. Mm, what's the word? Uh. <laughs> beguile? Loco does not beguile. <laughs> <laughs> he. kills. Um, well, maybe you could make an example of one of them, and that might scare him off. Yeah, Lorco's just going to grab a really big branch and throw it at him. <laughs> okay. With this action taken, we're actually going to head over to the map. So. You can see yourselves in the top right-hand corner. And you can see this, this open area of golden seeds within these decaying fruits. Mm -hmm. Hopefully you can see that down here. Mm -hmm. There are three monkeys you've spotted. One on the far side. One over here to the west. And one quite close by to you guys. Um, I will say, because you'd all be able to see this, these little gaps here do represent um, dips, like li little ravine is too big a word it's about 10 maybe 15 feet downwards quite steep so you might stumble and fall you have to jump over them um uh, same for the monkeys but just so you're aware of of what that is there other than that the ground is pretty open um mm. the fruit that's in the trees is a bit higher up you'd have to climb the trees to get them but everything else is close to the ground small bushes and such um, but seeing as you're you're taking an action, Loco, we are going to go into initiative order for this. Mm -hmm. This isn't necessarily combat yet. No one's fighting necessarily, but we're going to do this just so we've got an order to proceedings. Mm -hmm. So if people could roll initiative for me, please. Racing to get the seeds, are we, Tom? <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe you are. See what you can get. All right, let's do. Uh... Monkey, monkey, monkey. Initiative. Oh, I forgot to put my stupid token. What have we got for initiative? Six. <clears throat> monkey, monkey, monkey. Oh, pretty good. Sixteen. Is that everyone? Slug? Can I get an initiative roll, please? Oh, I got a seven. 
Oh, a oh, seven. seven. That's a slug. slug. I'm just gonna drink that. And you on. Seven. Right on the bottom. Right. Right. Uh, <laughs> um, and actually, in, much to your joy, Lorcor, um, in Pathfinder, uh, enemies that share the initiative spot with you always go first. Mm. Bastards. Mm. Right. Let's go with some quiet battle music. But, you know, crap. I'm his enemy, so that means I go first. <laughs> true, true, true. <laughs> and that loose PC, yeah. You, you <laughs> did take... And that PC. You did... Oh, what? The monkey? Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Um, but, seeing as you took the initiating action, I actually agree with you uh, here. So, if you want to go first, Lorcor, yeah. I'd say it's just an action to throw, to throw the stick if you wanted, but you probably want to move a bit closer. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, what is my movement speed again? Probably not great. Um, I'll find out. 25. Do I want to rage? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking monkeys! <laughs> Uh, eh, not right now. Maybe in a minute. So, 25. Can I move again? 25. And then action for the for a big stick. For a big stick? Absolutely. Yeah, we'll do different parts to this. Go ahead and make a, a ranged attack roll. Oh, okay. For me, please. Gonna nail the monkey and kill it. <laughs> Absolutely good. <laughs> Throw in a big stick. Uh, I have a javelin that counts for it. There you go. Yeah, just do a javelin. Fourteen. <laughs> Fourteen hits. Yeah. Right. Uh, we won't. You wait. Is it is javelin D six? Yeah, perfect. <laughs> I wanted a D six anyway. So three damage. Yeah, you throw the stick, intending to scare the monkey, and the monkey, whether through bravery or stupidity, just stares the stick down as it comes in and just <laughs> clatters into it, Wah! as it startles in the tree, um, and seems very unhappy and scared um, from what you've just done. Very good. That's your whole turn? That's my turn, yep. Yeah, this monkey's scared from what you've done now, so it is going to scamper down the tree... So that's one movement to the base of the tree, and then it's going to spend two movements running away from you. That's its whole turn. Tiberius. Tiberius sees the monkeys on the other side. He's like, oh, don't you little bastards, and he's going to like use two actions to run. Mm-hmm. There. And God, it's ages. It's not far. It's not far enough. Yeah, it's a pretty big map. Okay, he's he's gonna he's gonna try and run some more then. Cool, cool. Is is that difficult terrain? There's no difficult terrain here. It's all fairly open. This is um, somewhere where you'd have to jump over. So you would you have to use. I believe it's called leap. Yeah, you can leap up to 10 feet horizontally if, if your speed is at least 15 feet, which yours certainly is. Um, so it's one action to jump, but it is separate oh. to your movement. Yeah, he, he just gets to there then. Cool, thank you very much. Right, on to Monkey. This Monkey, sensing, <laughs> sensing it's go time, is going <laughs> to climb down the tree, one action. Move, move, and leap ooh, ooh, over here into that space there. Actually, seeing as he can... Yeah, 10 feet. That's three actions. Other monkey is going to climb down the tree. Stride. 
and leap. Oh, oh, ah. Slug, your turn. Ah, oh, yes. I'm, uh... So I can't remember how far I can go. Probably 25. 25 is kind of the norm in Pathfinder. Right, let's, let's go 25. Oh, yeah. Are you ill, George? Yeah, still. Oh, that sucks. Yeah. Your voice is all rough. <laughs> in a nice way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Gravelly Ooh. tones. It's refined. <laughs> mm. So I could run all over here and see, right? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, I just run along. Run along. <laughs> Very good. Top of the round, Lorcor. Lorcor runs up next to Slug. Very good. Mm, little child, grab the seeds. Let's <laughs> go pick up Slug and throw him over there. <laughs> Amazing. Slug <laughs> is a child. <laughs> yep. So I'm happy for this to occur. Uh, fuck it, we'll just improvise this. So throwing normally, normal throwing stuff is like 20 feet. Mm -hmm. So I'd say you can throw slug 20 feet. Yeah. Um, but I would like an athletics check, please. Okay. And this is assuming slug's fine with it as well. He has no opinion. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Go with the flow, slug mode. Ba oh my god. Uh, with that, I'll say 25 <laughs> feet. And you can choose absolutely where you want Slug to land. Anywhere 25 feet from you. You ping me a spot, I'll move him over. Um, yeah, so he's over there. Um, can I still get over there with one more action? Where, where are you throwing to... Slug? Like one of these spots, maybe? Oh, am I meant to ping it? I thought he was pinging it. Um, yeah, anyway. No, you're the one throwing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Top one? Very cool. Yeah. <laughs> slug, you go flying over to the other side, but Lorcor did such a good job, you don't take any damage. Sick. Nice. Um, uh, and then, with the last action, I just want to get over myself as well. Okay, so you you have to stride up to the edge of the gap. Okay. And then That's leap there. over next turn. Scared monkey. <clears throat> scared monkey. He's still scared. Yeah, scared monkey's gonna move up to here, but isn't gonna jump over yet. He wants to see how his friends get on. Tiberius. There, so he's an action to leap over. Very nice. He'll run there, mm -hmm. and then like there, he's going to do uh, a spell, ghost sound. So oh. he pulls out his loot and starts strumming. I'll show you what it does. Auditory illusion of simple sounds. Max he, he wants wow. it to sound like the big cats, so however many big cats to normal humans. Very like good. a roars. Like a roaring, yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, so the strumming sound is quickly eclipsed by the sound of a, a pre fierce predator roaring. Um, Slug and Lorcor, you can see Tiberius doing this. The monkeys, though, immediately panic and look around themselves. The little nice. box where it's emanating from. Do a... It's already worked, but I might add yeah. some extra stuff on. Do a performance check for me, please. Okay. Ten. Okay. They, they are definitely scared. They are definitely scared. Right. On to monkey down here. Monkey down here does not like the sound of the cat. It's going to move here and end its turn. Monkey up here. Ooh. 
Will it grab that one fruit? It's pretty scared. It's going to uh, step. Grab this one fruit. Beep. Ugh. And stride as far away as it can from it. Back over here. Slug, your turn. Wow. Look at it. That's pretty good. Uh, you got a nice glowing seed in front of you. That is right in front of me. All right, can I grab that? Yeah, one action to pick one up. Yeah. Very nice. I'll get rid of it. And I'll mark it on your token with a little yellow ping. Can I grab this one too? Uh, it says sustained, which means you could spend one action on your next turn to keep it going. Cool. Yeah, if you got the movement for it, you could go pick up, move, pick up. Yeah. Yep, that one's from a low hanging branch. Slug has two of these seeds. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> Very nice. Lorcor. Uh, Lorcor can jump over himself. Yep. Loop. Uh, go there. Yep, absolutely. Uh, so is that one full action, is it? That's one action, yep. Okay. You've got two actions mm. left. Uh, get over... Over here. If I stand here, can I pick up both? Uh, if you had two actions, oh. yeah, one action for each one. Which one are you going for? This one. Very nice. Plucked. Feel this warmth of the the glowing seed in your hand. Tiny in your big palm. Yeah. Monkey. Tentative. Yeah, it doesn't like what it's seeing. It is going to leap. Oh, that's 15 feet. Mm. Going to leap 10 feet to here. Stride 20 feet to here. And leap 10 feet to here. Tiberius. Tiberius is going to use an action to sustain the noise. Very good. The roar once more. Roar. It's going to run down there. He's going to pick that one up. Very nice. <laughs> one seed. Oh, you did it for me. Thank you very much. Oh, you had two on that for a minute. Yeah, it's weird when you have done the DM and um, player, does it? Bottom monkey. Doesn't like the sound of the lion or the, the leopard, whatever's going on. It's quite far away, though. It's going to leap. It's going to climb, and it's going to pick this one here. But it's going to stay up in the tree where it feels a bit safer. And then monkey with one seed. Doesn't like the sound of the lion. So it's not going to move towards it. It's going to skirt around 20 feet. 20 feet. And it's going to try and steal a seed off of you, slug. What? You look like yeah. a vulnerable little boy. <laughs> In fact, yeah, I'll do I'll do its action properly. So it would have stride used to stride once, then it's gonna use two actions called grab and go. What? <laughs> the monkey strides up to its speed. At any point during this movement, it can interact to take a single item of light bulk or less. Uh, but because it's on you, I have to try and steal instead. Thievery check. What is your um, perception modifier, Slug? That's a great question. I'm glad you asked. <laughs> uh, perception modifier. Is it three? Three. Okay, so that means your DC is 13. And the monkey has a plus five to this roll. It fails! This little monkey hands come up. <laughs> trying to grab at your seeds, but you manage to slap it away. Yeah. And it, it ends its turn there. And it is your turn now. Oh. 
This is a tricky situation. This is monkey. <laughs> a little monkey scrabbling at your hand. Can I grab his seed? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Go ahead and make a thievery check for me, please. Yeah. It will be against the monkey's perception DC. Oh! That is enough. As you <laughs> slap the monkey's hand away, it like rubs its hand for a second. Hoo, hoo, hoo. And it doesn't realize that during the slapping, you managed to palm the seed out of its own hand. It's pretty cool, huh? Up to three. Slug seed to a slug. <laughs> That's only one action. You got two actions left. Uh, I'm going to run up next to uh, Orko and grab this one. Very nice. Up to four seeds. Yeah. Seed kingpin. Loco, your turn. Uh, <clears throat> Lorco doesn't like this monkey trying to steal shit. <laughs> Lorco is gonna just huff out his chest. He's gonna walk up to it. Oh, oh annoying monkeys! It's <laughs> like looking at this monkey as well. Uh, I think he will. Oh, uh, yeah. He's not going to rage just yet. <laughs> but he will just claw it, because I can't do the draw attack unless I'm raging, so I'll just claw it. Makes sense. Um, so, claws. The razor claws come flying. Um, uh, that does not hit. Uh, da, da, da. One action claws. remains. Oh! And that's with the minus four as well. That definitely hits. What's the damage? Uh, is it this? Oh, seven. The claws go raking across the monkey's form, oh. and you see three diagonal slash marks and blood <laughs> beginning to come out of the monkey. <laughs> I think it's probably going to run the fuck away. Good. Monkey eat down here first. Doesn't like the leopard noise, so it's not going to get closer to the noise, but it will use one action to pick up this fruit, uh, seed rather. And then step over here, pick up this one. It's just trying to get as many as it can. Tiberius! I guess Tiberius can't move this sound, can he? No, you could do two actions to cast it again, it's cantrip, but moving it, no. I don't think it's worth it now. Gonna <laughs> run down here, <laughs> pick up that one. Yep. Um, I'm just gonna go up there. Very nice. And he's gonna, he's gonna try and make himself look big and tough. So, oh wait, he moved, picked up, and no. yeah, that's free. Yeah, it's done. Very good. Thank you very much. This one sees you going for that one. Does take an action to clamber down this tree, though, because it was hiding up the tree. And it's going to stride here and pick up this one. Yeah. Ooh, 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 ooh. Um, that is its whole turn. The one on the top. Yeah, fuck this. Lorcor's slashing at him. Step. Leap. Stride. See ya. Fuck that shit. I ain't getting eaten by a giant crocodile, man. Uh, in fact, I'm good. Oh, I mean, I won't remove him from the tunnel yet, but he's probably fucking running away. Slug! Ooh, yeah, slug time. <laughs> oh, can I get this one? That one is up the tree. You'd have to climb the tree. Duh, climb the tree? Yep. How high up is it? You think it's about 15, maybe 20 feet up? It's a pretty big tree. 15, 20 feet. Yeah. This one and this one are high up in trees. Everything else is close to the ground. Yeah. Oh, and, and this one's really high up as well. The fact it's in a tree that makes it more appealing somehow. 
What do you mean I can't have that seed? <laughs> well, well, well. What's it going to be, Slug? A satisfying jingle of seeds in your pockets already. It's pretty good, isn't it? But there's more seeds to go. Yeah, I'll go over here. Uh, I want this one. If I could do my mage hand skill. Ooh. Yeah. What's the range on it? Uh, Probably enough. Yeah, it's 30 feet. Oh my god, yeah, absolutely. Does Slug's mage hand look like anything in particular, or is it invisible? I can never, I don't know, with Pathfinder mage hand. Yeah, it's, in, it's invisible in this instance, please. Plucked from the boughs of the tree, the seed comes floating happily down towards you. Oh, yeah. Bing! Very nice. Uh, is that everything? It's mage hand two actions. I'm guessing it's two axes. I don't really know, but I'll stop there. Okay, yeah. okay. Mage hand. Yeah, two actions. Very nice, though. Cool. Uh, Lorco, your turn. The monkey has scampered, and you can see a, a small trail of monkey urine on the ground behind it where it's run away. <laughs> well, now he sees this one over here, stealing ones from, uh, well, almost stealing them. From, um, Absolutely. How far away? Lorco's like the blocker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Lorco is going to do a stride. Stride right past these fruits at 25. So, like there, there. Yeah. Very nice. And then he will um, do this. Oh my uh, god. <laughs> and swing at him. I think I could have done it. Oh, you, you get yeah, you get to stride twice. So yeah. this this will just be your first two actions altogether. So two actions, then I get two hits. Yeah. Nosh, 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 nosh. Oh god, that monkey. <laughs> <laughs> monkey might be fucked. As Lorcor just comes in like a fucking wrecking ball. Serpentine oh, speed. Yes. Ooh, twelve misses though. The monkey ducks low to the ground. Oh! He's missing. Oh, 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 ah! As it moves from side <laughs> to side. You do have, everyone has one hero point at the start of the session, so. Ah, uh, I'm on a monkey. That's it. I think just about had enough movement. Uh, monkey over here. Ooh, doesn't like the look of Lorcor. But does see that the one up here is unattended now. Ooh. Oh, there's one right here though. Pick up the scraps. Twenty. Twenty. Oh, diagonal movement screws this monkey over so bad. Curse you, Pathfinder! It's gonna have to move a third time. Third stride. Get to here. That's his whole turn. Tiberius. Interesting. Uh, Local's got this one wrapped up. <laughs> Gonna move in between these two. Be like whoosh, whoosh, picking both of them. Bing, bing. Smooth as you like. Both seeds in your pockets. Just out of interest. Yeah. Tiberius would have had a look in that sack before. Yes, the the small sacks um, that were <coughs> given to you by. Um, Herbert Kume and uh, Pickbum. Inside, you would, um, you'd have figured it out pretty quickly. Is basically just a, almost like um, like a bag of sand, but it's it's spores, mushroom spores, um, dried out and sitting like a, a fine powder in the the bag. Okay, so not anything edible. I mean, <laughs> it's up to you. I mean, would Chuck have ever given? No, 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 no. Okay, no, he's got. But... He'd have that in mind anyway. Yeah, very good. Um, right, this monkey 
just been slashed at twice. Is it going to try and be cheeky? It is a monkey. <laughs> 20 feet to here. Leap. <laughs> okay, it's going to... It's going to... Oh, wait, no, because that's 15 feet. Ah, oh, diagonal movement. I like it. I actually think... All right. <laughs> it's going to be... What's your perception modifier, Lorco? Oh, gosh. Um... It's going to try and steal from you. <laughs> oh man, it's such a bad idea. <laughs> My perception... Uh, uh, that, would that just be normal perceive? Is that the one? Just the modifier, yeah. So your perception is like plus three, Six. plus five. Six! Nice. So DC of 16. The monkey has a modifier of 50, uh, five rather. So it does! It steals the seed! <laughs> As it ducks and dives, its little prehensile tail comes up and plucks the seed from your little pocket. Whoosh. <laughs> it may live to regret this, but it's gonna scamper with its second action over here and then leap 10 feet onto <laughs> this little island here. Woo, woo, woo! Successful monkeying. All right, the monkey at the top is gonna continue to run away. He's had a bad, bad time. He goes running off the map. Howling and hooting as he runs away. <laughs> Slug. Yeah. Let's grab uh, this one. Yeah. Yeah. Move over <laughs> and grab. And... God, I'm running out of colours. It's a shame we can't step them. Yeah, agreed. I've been looking into some, um, brrr, what are they called? Not macros. Oh, I know what you mean, yeah. Yeah, the modules. But anyway. Thank you, Slug. Very nice. Slug's, everyone else is like fucking about with the monkeys and Slug's just walking along like Mr. Monopoly. Just like, yep, all the seeds for me. <laughs> uh, Lorcor. Lorcor? We could chase off his monkey. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> um... <clears throat> So it's interesting because sudden charge won't get you there. No, because you need to leap. So he's going to get to there. Yep. He's going to leap. Yep. And he's going to get. <laughs> ooh, ooh, ah, uh, ah, uh, oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, it's a shame I can't, didn't rage earlier. Damn it. <laughs> oh, that definitely hits, though. Eight slashing damage. Oh, my God. Oh. A grievous <laughs> wound opening up the the skin of this monkey in multiple places as its little cheeky grin turns to a, a howl of pain. Um, it's just still up, but um, <laughs> okay. very worse for wear. All right, monkey. Monkey's going to pick this one up. It's got three. It's going to move. It's going to pick this one up. It's got to get it while the big crocodile man's killing his mate instead. <laughs> Tiberius. Um, he will... Now. Look at him. <laughs> Kill him. He's got four. <laughs> Bored. Four shiny seeds. What one's closest to that monkey? This one? Yeah. There's more... Oh, uh, yeah. About the same. And he'll get in. He'll get inwards then. Got it. Pick that. Up. He'll pick that up. Let's see if he can do anything quickly. Yep. Yep. Because he has to. He has to draw his crossbow out, doesn't he? Which should be an action. Um, yeah. Interact. I'm seeing oh, the strength okay. of that that barbarian class. Well, ghost that sound. Hmm. You never need to draw a weapon. Yeah. You are the weapon. It's fucking <laughs> <You> awesome. <are. laughs> yeah. He's going to. He's. Oh, how far away is the monkey? Not very. 35? Oh. No, but can't see what that says. Who'd have moved there above the seed then? Yeah, that's fine. 30. 30 um, feet. Then he'd use a cantrip. Um, 
telekinetic projectile. Oh no! And, they, and you pick up like a random rock that's lying around, and just like point his loot at it, and it just goes straight towards the monkey. Incredible! Oh, like, piss off! <laughs> that is a miss, I'm afraid. There's no way your modifier is only three, though. Let me have a look at the old character. Sh I think it is. I think it's right. Oh, wait. No, your I'm spell attack roll is six. Is it might it? be because your um, telekinetic isn't set to. It's a really annoying thing this does, where it might have set it to arcane instead of occult. Uh, yeah, I did track it in from the thing. Yeah, so it will have set it to arcane. But anyway, uh, a ten would still miss, unless you want to use a hero point. Yeah, he would. Very nice. I want that. <laughs> Ring. It's the monkey staring happily at the four seeds in his hand. Ooh, the sixteen. The rock shoo, comes flying over and clonks it on the back of the head. Blah! Squawks loudly as it is badly bruised in much the same state as the one next to Lorco now. Woozy and angry. Found it. Nice. What cult spell? Right, the one next to you, Lorcor, is not going to be cheeky anymore. 15, leap, 10, and fucking 20 feet. Run, 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 run. From where the other monkey ran off, you hear more hoots and howls. <laughs> As a swarm of monkeys. Oh. <laughs> Tom's always wanted to do this. Huh? Yeah. Revenge of the monkeys. <laughs> the swarm is going to replace the uh, initiative of the monkey that went off. There's a massive monkey with a bowl hat on. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> Ooh, motherfucking ooh. <laughs> and Monkey Swarm has... I was just so pleased Monkey Swarm's an actual thing. 25 feet. So stride. Stride. Leap. That is its turn. But you see this mass of monkeys jumping over each other, egging each other on to run towards the horrible people. Slug. Oh boy. That's too many monkeys. It's a lot it's of a lot monkeys. Of... Uh... Let's grab some seeds. Let's go this. <laughs> Seed grabbed. Over here. <laughs> Lord, your turn. Um, fucking monkey's getting away. It is. I'm just gonna stand it and throw rocks at it until it dies. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, do, do, do you have do. a javelin? <laughs> um. You want a javelin in it? I actually gave myself a javelin or not. You can have some javelins. It's hunting stuff. Yeah, true. The only thing, yeah, I suppose I'm, I'm not raging, so I suppose I'm allowed to use them, right? Yeah, 100%. <clears throat> so if you want to stay standing, a javelin's normal... So um, the way thrown and any range stuff works in Pathfinder is they have a range on them. Mm. And you can throw it up to six times that range. It's just that for every um, extra mm. range amount above the first, you get a minus two to the hit roll. Okay. So a javelin's range is 30 feet. Yep. So this, Javelin. yeah, you take a minus two to this throw. Okay. But I'm going to do it three times. Oh, well, you, you get the multiple attack yeah, penalty yeah. as well. So, But a, a barrage of javelins... 
So the first one would hit, but with it being just outside the range increment, you the javelin, three javelins just go clattering around this monkey, dancing around oh, this no. three teeth. I'm going to use a hero oh. on the first one. Cause on the first I one. To Makes die. sense. So, Very good. Yeah. Your best shot. Oh, that <laughs> definitely <laughs> hits! <laughs> As this monkey, and with that in mind, you didn't throw the second um, and third javelin. You'd still have two actions. Your first javelin whoosh goes flying out and the monkey scurrying away you can see it already raising up one of these seeds to its mouth just just gets pinned to the ground they dead on impact <sighs> only local steals <laughs> he's gonna jump back over yeah. can i do that from that direction uh yeah another leap yeah absolutely yeah. And am I in range to grab this one, or do I need to move again? Uh, yeah. yeah. That's fine. Boop. Grip. Very nice. Productive turn there. This monkey on one HP is going to run for the swarm. Ooh. 20. 20. It's going to leap. Tiberius. He's a big swarm, but something varies yet, so he's gonna... Yeah, and it is just monkeys. Doesn't really want to kill them, but... <laughs> <laughs> He'll pick, pick, that, pick that one up. Very nice. Your fifth seed. Then he'll head down here. He's like, Will he go further to the east? There's a big sw monkey swarm coming. <laughs> There's a monkey storm a blowing. Right, they're gone. Monkey swarm. 25. 25. <laughs> it's coming for loot. <laughs> As they close in towards you, Lorcor. Mm. Come, Johnny, food. <laughs> and boom and the way swarms work just like in D&D &D, is they essentially go in your space you don't take any damage or anything now they used all three of their actions to get there that's the end of their turn slug oh yes it's slug it's, it's slug. slug um uh yeah, I don't like that big swarm. It's thrown away. <laughs> Put all the seeds. There's so many. <laughs> and this one. Very nice. Bing. Run out of colours. Let's start giving you cool pictures as well. Flag. Is that it? Yes, thank you. Very nice. Lorco. Surrounded by monkeys. Hmm. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> 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 Full King Kong mode, but weirdly <laughs> reversed. <laughs> the monkeys flying off your muscles. Very nice. Yeah, you get your fix. temporary HP. Oh yeah, what was my temporary HP? Uh... Is it just equal to your level? No idea. Let me have a look. But I know I get if you want to start doing AC. your stuff. You do, yeah. Uh... So... Okay, well that wasn't what I wanted, Archives of Nethys. Mm. That was silly of you. Uh... Rage, here it is. Rage. Is it minus 2 AC or 1 AC? Uh, I've got it right here. O only minus one. Oh, okay. okay. And it's your level plus your con modifier for your temporary HP. Oh, okay. Cool. So, and Rage is cool. So 16 AC. Uh, uh, blah, blah, blah. And level plus con, did you say? That's exactly right. So four. Very nice. Temporary. Oh, that's one action. Yep. Um, sorry. 
these berries could just be, well, the calf now they are. Uh, so he's gonna bite. Oh, fuck. Oh. And he's gonna. That picture of a monkey looks horrific. <laughs> it does indeed. Oh, oh so unlucky with the uh, rose <laughs> snapping and whipping with your tail. Two dicks the monkeys. Me. Yeah, they're all just dancing around. Uh, 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 it is the other monkey who is over here. He is going to run around 20 feet, leap 20 feet. Yeah. Tiberius. Uh, he'll pick the three up next to him. Very nice. How Ping. worrying. Ooh. He's going to. Oh. Do a recall knowledge if you like. <laughs> Oh, 35. Shit. Wait. Area 15 foot cone. It doesn't say how far though. Does it say range? No. I can look it up if you like. Yes. Color spray. Ah, oh, such a cool spell. Color spray. Do, 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 do. Uh, it's from you. So we have 15 foot cone from you. Oh, a cone. Right. Yeah. yeah. He's going to. Um, and he will just do the can trip that he did before. Yep. Very nice. Fish sound. Oh. Where He's are you focusing it? There, right next to monkeys. I love that. <clears throat> Same sound again, the roaring. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Um. Yeah, do a uh, performance for me again, please. Or if you'd prefer, uh, like, a spell attack roll. I'm going to do performance. Cool. Ooh, 19. Nice. Let's have a quick look at their will. Say, will DC. Yeah, you definitely beat it. So rather than scattering, I'm actually going to give them the Frightened 2 edition. Which is pretty damn good. Lowers their AC by two. Lowers their attack rolls by two. Basically everything by two. Uh, oh god, why can't I find the frightened picture? There it is. Frightened. Very nice. And it is their turn. Monkey swarm. Oh, actually, hold on. Oh. Ghost sound does have the auditory trait. So, Monkey Swarm has an ability called Cacophony. The monkey's awful racket of screeches and howls oh drowns out other sounds. Oh, <laughs> any, <fuck. laughs> any creature performing an auditory action in the area must yellow. Oh, hang on. Uh. Oh, but you, uh, this is weird how it worked out. It actually requires a performance check, which you did, and beats the DC. So there we go. Very nice. Mm -hmm. That all, I see, I just knew that was going to happen. So they definitely are frightened too. They are going to use... They're going to use Ransack on you, Lorcor. Mm-hmm. Two actions. The swarm rummages through the possessions of a single creature within its space. Yeah. Attempt a thievery check. They got a plus eight to this. Oh, that's bad though. Pretty sure that's going to fail. <laughs> um, it's against your reflex Ooh, um, okay. DC. So ten plus your reflex modifier. Is a four. It's saving. Throw. Yeah. So. Fourteen, yeah, saving throw. So yeah, they fail. Don't critically fail, which is lucky for them. Um, but they do fail, so they don't get anything from you. They will use their last action to do swarming bites. Mm -hmm. um, you actually make a reflex save for this. It's not an attack roll. So reflex save, please. Twenty. 
Oh, 20, nice. So you pass, meaning you only take half damage, you take <laughs> one damage. Nice. Little monkey teeth. <laughs> Biting against your scales. That's its whole turn, though. Yeah. Slug. Oh, oh and, and it's bright and can 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 go down. Down. Well, well, well. <laughs> I'm just one slug in a world of seeds. What is a slug to do? Uh, well, we want this seed for one thing. Very nice. Grab. Grab. Uh... There we go. <laughs> so wicked. <laughs> Loco. <laughs> You're dodging. But not for long. <laughs> oh, that definitely yeah. hits. Oh, 14 <laughs> damage. Oh, hang on. But Monkey swarm. swarm, yeah, does have, and this is piercing, <clears throat> does have some resistance to piercing, but it's not like in, um, it's not flat halving like in D&D. &D. Mm. It has resistance of three to piercing. So I just take three away from that. So that's still 11 damage. <laughs> cool. And then yeah. just for flavor, try and do a tail whip, which has got the sweep thing. Oh, so very cool. Sweeping around. Yeah. And this is, damn it. Ah, sweeps through them, but you manage to catch like three monkeys in your jaws, crunching down. Hell yeah. Very nice. Um, but... Do I have one more? Oh, you do. Sorry, yeah. My bad. Oh. Um... Um, um, um. Oh, I might as well just do the whip again. Let's try again. Whip it. Damn it. Oh, with the frightened. No, not quite. Close, though. Um, Sneaky monkey is going to go 20 feet. 20 feet. And leap. Oh, sneaky little shit. <laughs> sneaky monkey wants some seeds. Tiberius. Tiberius. You go to all of him. And he runs. Up here, he's going to throw the bag with the spores in at the monkeys. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Make a ranged attack roll, please. Okay. I'll just do his... Uh, yeah, crossbow is fine, or cross shortbow. Oh, yeah, 17, for sure. The bag he's doing hit... it, so it kind of... He's trying to do it. Wherever the wind's blowing, so it doesn't hit the core. Cool. Roger that. That's a good enough roll to definitely do that. You hit. You actually manage to hit a monkey as it's jumping in midair. The the bag breaks. The spores go flying out. The monkeys <coughs> coughing and wrenching, retching, not retching. Uh, they will make a fortitude save. It's going to have quite a high DC. These are premium Henry Mush spores. <laughs> they do pass, but not critically pass. So they are sickened. We haven't done sickened, I don't think. Let's use Broken Skull. They are sickened one. Very nice. So they'll have to do the wretch action if they want to get rid of it. And there might be some other effects in the future. But for now, that's what you see. Uh, status penalty equal to this value on all your checks and DCs. Yeah, nasty. Um, very good. Uh, one more action, Tiberius? Let's pull in the bag up as an action. Oh, very good. Thank you. The swarm is going to... Oh, it doesn't like how much it's hurt, but these monkeys are whipped up into a frenzy. It's going to try and ransack you again, Lorco. Yeah. It's got to beat 16 plus 8 to this. <clears throat> it does get your seed. <gasps> My seed. So rude. And then it's going to try and bite you. Yep. So you need to make a reflex save, please. Oh. Swarming bites. Yeah. Ang, 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 ang. 17. Very nice. You only take half of this. Two. 
Haven't even broken through your temporary HP. Oh, yeah. That is its full turn. It does lose the frightened condition, but still has the sickened condition. Oop. Slug! <laughs> They, they, only, they only get two. Uh, ransack is two actions. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm going to grab this one. Pink. Fucking rolling in seeds is slug. Okay, another one. That one's up the tree, don't forget. Yeah, can I, can I magic it from here? Yeah, mage hand, two actions, for sure. Pink. Yeah. My god. <laughs> Fucking seed tycoon. <laughs> <laughs> Loco. Looking good. Yeah, let's bite him. Covered in spores. Oh. Uh, that would have missed, but the spores, the sickened condition means it hits. Yeah. And 15, take away 2 is still... Wait, take away 3 is still 12 damage. As in a frenzy of gnashing fangs. <laughs> Snapping through the air, many monkeys hit the dirt dead, others just scatter out into the wilds, shrieking and squealing as they mm. run dead. <sighs> <laughs> and there. I cannot finish a rage until I kill all the enemies in the area. So this monkey... <laughs> oh god! <laughs> He's still there. Uh a uh, hapless monkey that's just looking at the seed like, oh yeah, it's gonna be good. <laughs> so, right, all then. I can do is run up to it for now. Very nice. Uh, let's get him. Uh, sneaky monkey! Oh, God! <laughs> Grabs this one. Leaps. <laughs> 20 feet. Uh. Tiberius. Gonna run over there. Very nice. Hit that one up. A seed for you, sir. It's gonna run over there. Perfect. Swarm out of the order. Slug. Oh, finally had a seed, is it? You guys have you guys done, done very, very well. well. So this one in a tree as well? Uh, that one is in a tree, yeah. Oh. Oh, that's a bit much. Mm. All right, well, I'll run over to here and then... May chant? Yeah. Bink. Yeah. Uh, let's give you... <clears throat> that's it. Jeez, a slug has... One, two, three... Five, six, seven, eight, twelve seeds. Uh, Loco, Olibim. Yeah, sorry, it's just enemies that I can perceive. So would I have seen him from over here? I assume so. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. It's a pretty open area. Then I'm coming. That's two. <laughs> and then that's one. <laughs> <laughs> run, monkey, run! <laughs> <laughs> then stride and then it's going to stride but it's, it's got a climbing speed so it's just going to go straight up this tree yeah ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> uh, put a little symbol little castle symbol oh, up in the tree fuck off <laughs> Tiberius you can pick the one up next to <laughs> yep leisurely plucking of seeds now moves there pick that one up lovely two more seeds Good. slug well, oh. mm. not many left. Not many one left. In a, one in a tree. You could do a move and mage hand. I think it's just in range. Is it? I think so. You go 25 and then 30 feet range. Let's try that. Zoop. Oh. Yeah. yeah. You have to. You have to lean forward a little bit, but with your little invisible hand, pink plucks the sea. This area looks completely harvested out. Uh, it's only the one in the hands of the dead monkeys covered in blood over here. 
three down here, and one completely left over here. Loco. Oh, it's a monkey come. in a tree. <laughs> it's so fucking scary. <laughs> <laughs> so that's two. Um, I don't have a climbing speed, but... Yes. You can still climb yeah. with the climb action, and you do an athletics check. Okay, I think he's definitely going to climb. He uses his claws and just digs them straight into the tree. <laughs> <laughs> athletics. Uh, athletics, please. That's a pretty simple DC. Yeah, that passes. So with a normal success... Oh, pretty slow. With a normal success, you move up, across, or safely down the incline for 5 feet per 20 feet of your land speed. Yeah. Uh, so you went 5 feet up. It's a 15 foot tree. Oh, sure. So 5 feet up. Five feet. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'll say it's 2 climb successes. If you'd crit success, which you weren't actually far off, you would have gone straight up. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay. But yeah, so you're about halfway up at the moment. Cool. Monkey. Mm. Mm -hmm. Monkey scared. Monkey's gonna throw a seed at you. Uh! <laughs> eat it. What's your he AC it? sixteen. <laughs> yeah, it failed. Just binks off your scales. So yeah, you snap and eat it. <laughs> ah! Monkey's gonna. <laughs> All right, what's the rules for proper jumping? This monkey's gonna make a proper jump. Oh, it's gonna do some sweet parkour to that tree. <laughs> it's gonna jump action, make an impress. Oh wait, no, this is the jump spell. Where's my proper jump action? Jump. Uh... It'll be a long jump. jump. Oh god, two actions, long jump. You stride, then make a horizontal leap and attempt an athletics check to increase the length of your jump. Total distance you're attempting to move. He's trying to jump to the middle of that tree over there. Hey, okay, he's trying to leap 20 feet, baby. How do we do this? Equal to the total distance you're attempting to move during your leap. Oh, totaled it. Oh, fuck. Okay. Okay. I mean, he does, he's a monkey. He, he does not have an athletics modifier. <laughs> God. And he needs to... Okay, I'm going to make this fair for the monkey. He's, I'll use his acrobatics modifier, but same rules otherwise. So I need to roll a 15 or higher. Go, monkey, go. Uh... No! <laughs> woo, woo, woo! <laughs> <laughs> he leaps and plummets <laughs> Blunk and smacks into the ground and falls unconscious Blunk. knocked out entirely and with that <laughs> <laughs> initiative <laughs> is over and with that Lorco does a trunch ball fall to the ground <laughs> runs around the corner and eats him do you eat the seeds with him or do you keep the seeds separate? Um, I think he's raging, so he's just going to eat like, the whole of them. <laughs> I Every love it. Him. Hero point for excellent flavour there. <laughs> Whoosh! Monkey is gone in Lorcor's belly. Very good. Um, there are five more seeds over here. Fair to say, Tiberius and Eek. Slug. Tiberius would go for these two. Yeah. So I imagine Slug would, I don't know, would he jump off across the river? Which well, he would just scramble over. Yeah. Yeah. So, so add, 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 add three more for Slugs, Tiley. So Tiberius ends with seven seeds. Slug. I think he'd have nine, actually. Oh, sorry. Nine. Yeah. Very good. And slug one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, <laughs> eight, nine, seven, 13 plus three, sixteen seeds. 
<laughs> you can add them to your inventory as a glowing seed. Um, functionally, they can provide you with um, uh, sustenance for a day. Pretty much, they will function like a D&D good berry. Sustenance for a day or one HP. Okay. Cool. So they can heal you one HP if you eat them, or they can feed you for a day, a single seed. Gorko has four in his belly. That counts, right? <laughs> he feels very weirdly full. <laughs> well, not that weird, considering how many monkeys he's eaten. Yeah. But yes, so Lorca won't need to eat tomorrow morning. Um, but for the rest of you, the only other thing to keep in mind is um, they do heal you one HP. You can't feed them to other people. It's not like a potion that you can pour down someone's throat. This would need to be crunched up and to. Yeah. So yeah. But yes, very good. You stand in a glade, bloody monkey bodies on the floor, <laughs> and many of these glowing seeds in your hands. <laughs> Plenty of fresh food. Well, uh, <laughs> we can head back to the first successful adventure of this adventure. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, Local's just gonna go over and skin some monkeys, take some stuff, oh, take some meat. Very nice. Yeah, go ahead and make a survival check for me, please. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, I'll say you take, we'll call it, call it monkey fur or monkey hide, mm. two of those, um, and enough meat to feed you for the next. You think probably two, three days? Nice. Cool. Very cool, nice. Cool, cool. I think Rhys would say, uh, I did throw those uh, spores over it. I doubt that really bothers you, though. <laughs> Maybe some seasoning. <laughs> yeah. Spores. Yeah, I, I had forgotten about that. Would Lorcor do anything <laughs> different to the hides? Would he try and... Mm. Get rid of the spores or just leave probably, them as they are? Probably just shake them off, right? If it smells or anything. Yeah, give them a shake. Most mm -hmm. of the spores flutter down slowly to the ground. Very good. I mean, he's not taking all of them. I'm sure there's like a million monkeys here. He just wants like a few. Okay, yeah. So that was a good roll. So you pluck amongst them the ones that are li least spory, leaving the others shaking them off. Yeah, we'll say no harm done there. Very nice. Excellent. Right. Back on the trail. Successfully navigated the the open glade. <laughs> we carry over your survival check from before. You feel like you're making good progress. Um, you're not quite towards the the great the great opening where you know the the ruined tower to be the opening in the jungle. Um, and as the the day wears on, the the light begins to to fade. You think you're coming round to another night. Set up my little single tent. Yeah, very nice. Same situation as before. Is it Tiberius on guard again? Yeah, Tiberius um, doesn't want to, you know, get in a tent more than uh, he doesn't want to cram up the tent. So he, <laughs> he'd he'd be like, yeah, so I'll uh, stand guard again, of course. These peepers catch everything. <laughs> okay, you keep an eye out for those cats. I'll keep an eye out for his little blighters as well. We don't want any of that stuff stolen in the night. Exactly. Seeds. Just looks like for a um, slug with his massive bag full of seeds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, got loads. Oh. Is slug doing anything with his seeds? Slug's in bed, but he's cuddling his seeds. <laughs> I love it. Very nice. Little cool, like gets one of the monkey furs and just puts it on top of um, <laughs> little bloody and gross. <laughs> the slug react. Oh, the slugs asleep already. Oh, <laughs> snoring away. Very nice. So night falls. 
jubilant in your victory, seeing once again the primal savagery of Lorcor slaughtering anything that threatens you. I'm sure Tiberius and Slug feel very well protected, but perhaps yeah. also <laughs> just knowing not to get on Lorcor's bad side. As long as he eats, it's fine. <laughs> this turns into a cannibalism situation. <laughs> yeah, could be bad. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, as Night Falls, could I have another perception check for Tiberius, please? As your peepers are looking out into the jungle. Okay. That's a good roll. Night wears on. You get your torch out again. You, you It's only been a couple of nights, but you're starting to listen out for certain sounds. You see the shapes of the cats hunting in the canopies once more. But you notice a cat and you almost cheering it on in your mind as this one is, a, is an incredible predator. And you think if it gets enough, maybe it will leave some more birds and maybe you'll get one this time <laughs> instead of Lorca munching them down. <laughs> um, but as the cat is, is leaning in and shuffling its shoulders and getting ready to pounce, um, its ears suddenly prick up and you see the glint of its yellow feline eyes up in the canopy look over to the west and it scampers away in the canopy. And you, yourself, look over to where the cat was looking. And you see the glint of what looks like a, a piece of flint uh, moving um, out in the underbrush. And you hear the, the crack of a twig as if someone stepped on it. You think somebody's out there. Yeah, he does have low light motion. Would that help at all? That definitely would help. I'd say with that, you do recognize a humanoid shape stalking through the brush, clearly trying to be stealthy, but your keen eyes have picked it out. Okay. He's going to try and, well, put his torch out. Mm -hmm. Try and sort of hide um, in the Ooh. swampy terrain. Very interesting. But if they, if they seem to be approaching, mm -hmm. like... Um, the ten, who then he, he'd alert people. Yeah, they were definitely approaching. Seemed to be approaching you guys. As so, in, the person knows we're there. Or... Yeah, it seems that way. Oh shit! Um, you try and sneakily go to the tent then. Mm -hmm. and be like, "Wake up! There's some, there's someone outside. I don't know. They've got a sharpened piece of stone." Oh, a threat. Look <laughs> immediately gets up and is out of the tent. <laughs> Fantastic. And with Tiberius's excellent uh, perception roll, we're going to move us over to here. If you want to place yourselves anywhere in the <laughs> middle of the map here, with Tiberius's perception roll, you're all able to be alerted and quick enough to get up and ready to go. And could I have quickly back into it? Everyone, roll initiative for me, please. Yeah. Let's go with this one this time. Your perception roll was excellent, Tiberius, and as such, you're able to alert your crew to three. Humanoid figures stalking through the undergrowth towards you, each seemingly armed with primitive weaponry with spears held in their hands. One, two, three. God, I just need to add the initiative macro. Silly boy. One, two, and three. Got a plus four modifier, so we've got 14, 6, and 17. Again, this is not an ambush as it was intended due to Tiberius's quick thinking and um, sharp eyes, and so no one needs to. to you know, you're not prone, you're all up, battle ready with whatever items you want in your hands, ready to go. Right, nice. this one is going to come running out. 25 feet. Running out into the open. I will say it is nighttime. Um, Tiberius, you do have a torch. 
I will say... He would have tried to plunge it into the ground. Oh, very good. This being a bit of an open area, I will say the general thing is going to be low light. So if you have low light vision, this doesn't affect you at all. Um, or dark good. vision. No. But if you if you don't have low light vision, it's fine. You can still see all the people, but they, excuse me, they do count as concealed, mm -hmm. which which means that if you try and hit them with stuff, um, you have to roll a flat check of um, DC five. So if you roll mm -hmm. five or above on a D twenty, your attack goes off like normal, but otherwise it does miss. Mm -hmm. um, same rules for them though, assuming they don't have low light vision themselves. So this one stride to here, and it is going to, yeah, it's going to stride again, actually, to here. And as it comes up closer, Tiberius, you see it's a spear in one hand, and in the other is a net with weights on the ends of the net as it throws the net towards you. Plus seven to this against your AC. That is a critical hit, which does have an extra effect. The net goes flying out and twists around your body. Oh, but... Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. These guys don't have low light vision, so... Five or above. Yeah. It does go off. So, you are immobilized by the net because of the critical hit there. Uh, Hit target, and you are flat-footed, so minus two to your AC, and my, well, minus ten feet speed is the normal thing, but you are immobilized because of it. Um, you can try and escape on your turn. Escape is an action in Pathfinder, or someone else can use an interact action to take the net off of you. That is the guy's full turn. What's immobilized, D? You can't move. Uh, it's not okay. like restrained or anything, it's just your speed becomes zero. Okay. Uh, next one's going to do the same thing. But on law core, plus seven to this against your AC. Hit, but doesn't crit. So you can still move law core, but 10 feet less than normal. Mm -hmm. And you okay. are flat footed whilst the net is on you. So <clears throat> minus two to your AC. Okay. Um, and then it is going to. can see your threatening presence. It's actually going to move back. Your turn. Local is going to rage. <laughs> and he's going to flex his and he's going to rip apart this net off of himself. Very I good. And then he's going to yep. step Let me check. here. Use the grabbed creature. Sorry, just reading. Flat footed. You have to do the escape action because you're in the net. Hmm. What does that mean? What does that do? Yeah, let me have a little read. We're learning this system. Escape one action. You attempt to escape from being grabbed, immobilized, or restrained. Choose one thing that's imposing this on you, so it would obviously be the net. Attem oh, this, yeah, this is what you were thinking anyway. Attempt to check using either your unarmed attack modifier or um, your athletics. Hmm. Or can acrobatic. I, you want to do a sweet flip instead. Sweet flip. No, can I, can I get someone else's net off without taking my own off first? Uh, if you're next to them, yeah. That doesn't require any roll. You just use an interact action. So you could literally okay. just grab Tiberius' net off of him if you like. Yeah. So I'm not going to move either because that's an action. But Lorcor flexes in the net, rages, and then he just turns around to Tiberius's net and just chomps it in half at the, <laughs> at the, at the, at the bit there. Ouch. <sighs> and yeah. he's going to try and demoralize this guy with just a glare. Oh, Glares at this guy amazing. with the net. Amazing. Intimidation, please. Yeah. Uh, Will DC is 14. Intimidation, that is. 
Uh, that absolutely succeeds. This creature is frightened one. Yeah. Very nice. Whoosh. Um, you still you took the net off. You demoralized. You've got one action, I think, right? No, because I've raged. Oh, thank you. Yep, very good. Which I need to change the stats. Hold on. Well, okay. Oh yeah, and I need to put it in the order. But Tiberius, your turn. I'd be interested to see the guy panicking. He was like, you picked on the wrong monkey killers! And he's going to cast um, Magic Missile. Ooh, very nice. And Which he's going to do version? all of them Ooh. on the guy. He's just trying to blast him away. <laughs> Amazing. I assume... I can't remember from last time. It's the same as Thingy, where it just hits, right? Yeah. One, yeah, roll your damage. Three, four, and... Two. Three, four, and a two, so nine damage. Oh, hefty hit. Boom, boom, boom. Strikes into this creature. You can see each impact leaving brutal bruising and breaking of the skin. The creature staggers as if shot in three different places. Do they have tattoos? They do absolutely have tattoos across their upper bodies, though many of them you can see have been... Um, Seemingly pur purposely scarred and scratched away. Okay. Slug. Oh boy. <laughs> what are we doing, what are we doing Slug? slug? Uh, so is he still. Is he in a net? This is. Uh, you didn't, you get, didn't get Law Corps is, yeah. But what about Kieran? No, Tiberius has been freed by Law Corps. Oh, I see. Oh, well, I'll... Uh, can I try and get Lorcor out? Yeah, you can oh. move and then interact to get Lorcor out. Yeah, can I Can I cut his net open with my dagger? Yeah, the dagger comes out, and with worrying <laughs> deafness from a 13-year-old, the dagger <laughs> cuts through the net, and Lorcor, you are freed. He just does a big roar against this guy over here. Oh, my uh. God. I'm not meant to be scared. I'm the DM. <laughs> <laughs> One more action, Slug. Yeah, can I? Can I? Can I? Can I be prepared to jab someone if they come near me? Uh, so readying in action. Yeah. Is a, is in Pathfinder the way it works is you, it takes you two actions. Oh no. To, to ready a one-action thing like a jab. Um. So yeah. In this case, you can't. You could move, you could demoralize, or intimidate rather. Well, it's called demoralize. Or you could recall knowledge, see if you know anything about these guys. Oh, yeah, let's do that. Amazing. Um, you can do a society check for me, please. Twenty two. Oh, twenty two. Very nice. Yeah, you know these guys are exiled Sari. Um, they have taken on a much more um, cruel and primitive society than the Sari themselves. Um, you know that they have gained a reputation for being essentially slavers. They are capture or um, hunters and slavers. They capture animals, people, drag them away um, to be sold or or put to work um, or worse. You think these guys, obviously they have their spears and their nets, they clearly thought you guys would be a, a, a prize for themselves. But you also notice that they seem to each carry a small um, satchel on their little um, twisted uh, leather um, rope belts. Um, and you can see jingling around uh, inside, or you, you know from your knowledge of the Sari that they carry like a little... Um, Hit of poisons and potions inside. Do uh -huh. so you think if if they had if they do get up close and get you in a net, they might try and knock you out with one of these poisons? Oh boy, that's a bit weird. Yeah, very nice. Speaking of which, the last one bursts out of the bushes, <laughs> and it's going to try and throw a net at you, slug. Oh! Yeah. <laughs> the 
this guy's smart. He's going for the littlest one. Oh, plus seven to this against your AC. Ooh, oh, that was poor. Nine. The net <laughs> flops down limply on the ground in front of you. Angry at this, he is going to throw his spear instead at you, Slug. Uh, this will be only a plus two because of multiple attack penalty. An 18 to hit you. Oh, you have to do those things, remember? Oh, you're vision. absolutely right. He does pass, but thank you for reminding me. And it will be, as it hits, five damage. Ouch. Oh, excuse me. Because it's a thrown weapon, you do add the strength modifier. Seven damage. Christ. The spear cuts a nasty cut across your arm. Uh, that is its full turn, though. This one here is going to... It doesn't really want to approach. It's kind of scary. He's got hammered by magic missile. His net is used. Yeah, he's going to... He's going to throw a spear at Tiberius. Plus seven... 23 to hit you, Tiberius. Oh, you do a low light. Very good. I should do that first, really. Oh! <laughs> He's trying to make out your form. Whoosh! Throws it, but what he thought was your shoulder was just a bit of shadow from Lorcor's large form next to you, and the spear goes harmlessly trailing off into the distance. Yeah, this guy's having a bad time. He's definitely going to back up. And you see him... Um, he can't drink it this turn, but you see him use an action to interact and take a potion out of his little satchel. I'll put a little thing on to remind us all of that. This guy. Hmm. Lorcor's pretty fucking scary. Move. Spear. Uh, 18 to hit you, Lorcor. <laughs> oh, and yeah. the low light. Yeah. Son of a bitch! <laughs> they, <laughs> they miss as well as the spear goes skittering off. Oh, this has gone bad for them. He's definitely diving back into the underbrush. Lorcor, your turn. Lorcor. Mm -hmm. Really wants to go after that one, but Slug could just feel yeah. in it. Mm, don't think you'll get away from me. <laughs> but he does turn around towards this one. Very nice. Um, and... Does that hit? It does not hit. Oh, you do have the hero point I, I gave you. Point it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Oh! But I do need to do the five thing, actually. Oh, very good. Thank you for your honesty. <laughs> oh, 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 you're fine. Fucking hell, six... Oh, my, wait, 16 damage. Yeah. Oh, he goes down in one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> How do you kill him, Lorco? Oh, I think he just, like... He doesn't even look care for this guy. He's just like, meh. Oh, he wants that one up there. So he just, <laughs> he just turns around, goes past Willy, and he just chomps his head squashes it into a paste and just turns back around to go back after this one. And, yeah. Body falls limp on the floor. <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> Tiberius. Tiberius, when he's getting ready, he has his crossbow out. Yep. He doesn't want to get... He'd lose a shot at this guy running away. Nice. He's like, come back here, you coward, and face me like a man! <laughs> <laughs> Fire away. Oh. I'm sure. Not a crossbow, he's got a shield bay. Oh, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> a 15 does hit for oh, one <laughs> damage. Uh, boink. As this little arrow sticks in his butt cheek. Very nice. And he will also. Uh. 
He's going to inspire courage. Oh, yeah. Such a good ability. Remember the monkey, everyone? We showed them, didn't we? Um, <laughs> Fantastic. So he's got one more action left. But... Inspire courage gives everyone plus one to their um, attack rolls and damage rolls and saves mm. against fear effects. Nice. It's really good. Um, oh, trying to find an action he could do for this is the last one. Could he like is there like a taunt? Could he taunt that guy? Um there is I know there's hold on, getting PF too easy. I know there's like just make a distraction. That's one that's called distraction. Or distract. Oh god. Uh... Bollocks. Let's have a little look in the old oh, wait, here handout. Oh yeah, here we go. Uh delay. Cover. Point out six cents. Okay. Dismiss. Hello. Skill actions. Create a diversion is one of them, or faint. If um, Tiberius is trained in deception, he can do faint. He should be. Yeah. Yeah. He'll do. He'll do that then. Right. So we've got. Oh, sorry. Faint is within melee reach, but um, diversion. With a gesture, a trick, or some distracting words, you can create a diversion that draws creatures' attention elsewhere. Uh, attempt a single deception check and compare it to blah, blah, blah. become oh i see so that is for like you sneaking that's like a look over there and then yeah, yeah. disappear kind of thing i think you might just uh do demoralize he'll move actually okay go over here a little bit very nice like trying to size up that one slug Well, well, well. Choices, choices. Mm. I don't know what to do. Ooh. <laughs> You got you one guy over fails. here with this potion. One guy over here who's run away. You can see them both. You could do some spells to attack them. Or you could try and take cover. Find somewhere to take cover and hide. Eat a seed. <laughs> oh. Maybe I'll do a spell. Yeah. I'll just go. Oh. Where's he find? Hmm. There we go. Uh, well, 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 I have to move a little bit closer, which is annoying. Roger that. One movement. Uh. <laughs> 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 um. Yeah, and then I'll use my acid splash. Oh, awesome. Uh, uh, Don't click that. Uh, you splash a glob of acid that splatters creatures. Make a spell attack. Cool. Spell attack roll, please. One d six acid. What's a, what is a spell attack roll? So <laughs> if we look on your sheet. Under spells. Ah, yes. So your spell attack roll 
You are a sorcerer, so it's based on your charisma, and you are trained in it. Oh. So your spell attack roll is a plus six. Oh, nice. To roll. Um, I don't know if you can just click it. If I change Acid Splash, attack roll, yeah, yeah, uh -huh. yeah, yeah. Try clicking um, Acid Splash again. 17. There you go, 17. So, a 17 would hit, but it is low light unless Slug has low light vision. He does need to roll a d20, see if he gets a 5 or above. Ah, uh, does go through. Hey. So if you can roll a d6 for me, please. For the acid damage. Plus the one splash damage, which is included here. So four. Ah, nasty. Yeah. So <laughs> how does Slug's spell casting work? Does he point his, his stick? Does he wave his hands? Uh... How do you imagine Slug summoning his magic? In this instance, I think he's waving his stick. Yeah. Waves his stick, and a blob of acid, poosh, like a water balloon, splashes across the <laughs> exiled Sari, who shrieks out, Argh! as the acid burns on his skin. He's very badly hurt now. Very nice from Slug. Sari, seeing as he's got the potion in his hand, is going to drink it. That takes an action. Ooh, 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 ooh. It is only minor, so he only gets a d8. Oh, he gets the full eight. Okay, that helps him a bit. And he's not very happy with Slug. So he's going to move. Here. He's going to throw another spear at you. Ooh. Yeah. 22 to hit you, Slug. <clears throat> Four. Low light. Yeah. Oh, low light. Thank you. Oh, nice. Oh, my God. <laughs> ah! The low light plays in your favor again. As the spear scatters off, and he doesn't have a spear anymore now. Very nice. Right, this guy. He is proud. He's gonna go here. Yeah, fuck it. He's gonna face up to you, Lorcor. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see how that works out for him. Um, and he draws a crude-looking, um, like hunting club from on his back. Plus seven. Oh, yeah. Oh, shit. So it's going to be a d6 plus two doubled. Does he hit with the five thing, then? Oh, oh my god. If, if this <laughs> is taken away from me. You know, you can have it. Have it. No, 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 no. We play, we play by the rules. <laughs> Clearly, you guys are meant for the cover of night. <laughs> <laughs> As... <laughs> He brutally, critically strikes um, into a space where you're not, Lorcor, before he, like, rubs his eyes in fury. So he will go for a second attack. Minus five to this, so it's just a plus two. Ooh, roll 20 speed slow. Right. Bales. Oh, God. <laughs> As he looks up... With the little <laughs> dent in the ground he's just made, where he was so proud a second ago. He looks up at the gigantic form, his friend's blood still dripping from your fangs. It is your turn, Lorcor. Lorcor just looks down and grins at him. As... <laughs> just looking over that person's crushed head. <laughs> <laughs> Respect of you coming back, at least. Uh... <laughs> 22 definitely hits. 11 damage. Oh, low light. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Low light, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you make it very nice. And then the second attack, a natural one misses. Misses, yes. Uh, might do 
Went to the floors. Oh. Memo's the plus ones from Tiberius. This is true. No. Plus one. So the guy, both guys should have minus one more, I think. Oh, the damage. Yeah, 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 yeah. So on and the number. The other guy. God, he was almost dead then because he was on two HP. Whoops. Uh, he's on nine. Shoot, thirteen misses. Oh. Thirteen does uh, with a plus one from Tiberius. Only just miss, but it no. does miss. Tiberius, your turn. Going to set last, and I think one round. So yeah, that's fine. Um, Spy courage. Yes, yeah, one round. But you can continue doing it because it's a cantrip, right? Yeah. yeah. He'll continue doing it. Very nice. He'll shoot that guy. Very cool. So an action to reload, an action to shoot. Oh no, it's a short bow. You just shoot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, actually, he doesn't want to steal his kill. <laughs> he might yeah. get annoyed. He's going to shoot. Him. He's going to shoot him. <laughs> <laughs> Very wise. Yep, 40 feet away. And you have low light vision. Definitely hits for so a six. solid 6 damage. Nice, yeah. If that guy hadn't drunk his potion, he'd be down. Oh, and then he's, he's going to take a sneaky second shot. He's I love confident. it. Pew! Oh, <laughs> well, fuck. <Twang. Three. laughs> that does not hit. At some point, I may start using. I bought. Uh, well, I got a critical fumble deck for Christmas. There's a deck of cards. Oh, that's true. <laughs> but I wanted to see how the system was before I added stuff into it. Anyway, Slug, your turn. Well, well, well. Both, Both these enemies, enemies are looking, are looking real weak. Yeah, let's just glob some acid at this guy. Oh, get globbed. <laughs> They light as well. Oh, yep, yeah, true. 13. Well, it would be a 14, but it still misses, I'm afraid. No! No! Uh, the glob lands next to him. Oh, I need to read about splash. I think splash light always hits. Hold on. What for Wait, like you... one? Splash, you don't know, just straight. Let's take the splash. Yeah! You, they still take the splash damage, so he still so takes be, one. So be two. Yeah. Oosh. He's on <laughs> one HP. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That's what I mean. Very nice. All right, all right, this guy. Fucking hell. It's not looking good. Haven't even. I guess we, we dented the thirteen-year-old. <laughs> Maybe you should just try and finish off Slug. No! Yeah, he's going to move over here. Keep Slug between him and the rest of you. That was two actions to get there, though. He's going to take a swing with his club. Plus seven. And 19 to hit you. Low light. Low light. Does pass. Put one. D6 plus two. Six damage to you, Slug. Oh. <laughs> that is his turn. The one up here is facing you down in honourable combat, Lorcor. <laughs> Club! Low light. Oh my, oh my <laughs> god. god. <laughs> Just flailing at shadows. <laughs> Second attack, multi-attack penalty, so only plus two, so that misses. Oh my god. Does he have the stomach for it? I'm literally going to make a DC 15 will save for him. Yeah, he passes. He stands his ground, and with his last action, he's going to try and... They all have multi- You know, he's going to demoralize you! <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Does he have... Oh, he, does, he has plus four to his intimidation. Mm, pretty good. Uh, 14. What's your will, DC? Uh, uh, will is plus six. Yeah, he doesn't do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he shouts... Actually, he would have had a minus um, two to it anyway, because he doesn't speak uh, the same language as you. 
He All speaks right. in Sari, which is All quite right. a, a harsh, cutting language. I think Klingon. Yeah. Um, God, that's his turn. R.I.P. Lorcor. <laughs> well, I'll see if we hit first, eh? Very true. Mm. He just sort of looks down at him. <laughs> <laughs> a good effort. <laughs> Uh, 20, uh, but low light. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Oh, hey! oh. <laughs> You're both shadow boxing. Oh, and it misses. Does indeed. All right, let's do it's that. alive. Mm, do you know what the last action he's going to do? Is he's just going to try and um, grab him by the shoulders. Both claws into the shoulders and pick him up. Nice. Grapple. Yeah, go ahead. How do I do that? I think it's athletics. Let me check. It does also take the multiple attack penalty if you if that changes your mind. Oh, um, so... it's yeah, it has the attack trait. Oh, okay. Nah, fuck it then. I'll just claw him. Yeah. Slash him up. Oh. Agile. Missed. Wah, wah, wah. Wah, wah, wah. Tiberius! Lorcor and this guy are just flailing at each other. <laughs> Tiberius is uh, going to use his final missile. He's going to send one at uh, um, the guy next to Slug. Ew. Very good. He's down. Bursts through him. She's gonna send two at the one next to the local. Oh my god! Yeah, just kind, of, just kind of wants it. Um, you no could fuck die. this up. Oh! Oh wait, did you roll the other? Ah, oh, three. Okay, yeah. The missile. What do the missiles look like from Tiberius? Um, they're like shadow daggers that come out when he plucks his loot. Oh, that's so cool. Oh. Ding ding ding! Yeah. The daggers. <laughs> Go flying out, thud, 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 and almost in unison, the two figures, like felled trees, just pull back onto the ground. Dead. And with that. Oh, I forgot to play your victory theme before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we did it. Only slug took damage. Yeah. And didn't go down. Yeah. Took two hits. Big slug sorry. strong. Slug okay. strong. Fantastic. Well, the bodies lie there around you. A scattering of spears and nets on the ground <clears> as well. <throat> tangled up in some of your belongings. <clears throat> what do you do? Uh, Tiberius just look at Lord Corn. He's like, at least you have a midnight snack now. <sighs> ah, do not eat such... Dirty things. <laughs> oh, I agree. They are rather repulsive. Mm. Well done, small child. <laughs> <laughs> Too easy. <laughs> <laughs> you did not die. Impressive. Well, back to bed. Beerus <laughs> um, to go over to Slug. Be like, we're going to get you patched up, little man. Yeah. I'm tired now. Uh, you can you can do. A, is it a medicine check? Yeah, treat wound. Oh shit! Wait, he's not, he's not proficient in it. I thought he was. I. Th I think uh, I don't think you have to be proficient, though. It, obviously, there is a, a higher chance you crit fail. Um, you do need a healer's kit to do it. Oh, I did. Lorcord does have a healer's kit. Healer's tools. Very nice. Is that the right that Yep, the yep, yep. Thing? That sounds right to me. Which I assume his mum gave him. Yeah. But he is also not proficient, so he just have a crap nature or medicine check on you. 
Yeah, it'd be medicine. Mm -hmm. Up to you guys. The DC is 15, and if you crit fail, so four or less, you do hurt, Slug. It's up to you guys. Ah, you just sleep it off, small man. Yeah, I don't want to hurt you anymore, Slug. We'll see how it is in the morning. Well, Ooh. one of those guys, um, he drank something and seemed to give him rejuvenated spirit. Maybe one of these dead guys also has one. Mm, you, yeah. want, you want to check the bodies? Oh, look. Yeah. Look, 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 look. going to go and hang the bodies by a tree. <laughs> one tree over there, one over there. One over like, there. Ha hang them up with rope kind of thing? Yeah. Well, with, oh with like God. rope and vines, or whatever's around. Amazing, yeah. With your strength easily done with a bit of time, the bodies are, are left hanging in a grisly trophy like display. Um, yeah, uh, two of the bodies still have their lesser healing potions on them, so you can take a lesser healing potion. Um, otherwise, they had their clubs, which are 1d6 bludgeoning weapons. Um, and, uh, the spears are on the ground they are simple spears and nets as well that you could have used um in one of their satchels this guy down here um he also does have um a simple poison um from um slugs very good society check before you know this is a poison that can uh, cause people to fall asleep i want that works as a as a contact poison so you either need to apply it to a weapon or um just pour it on someone or what have you it's like a small little clay um vessel of sleeping poison can i have that yeah, yeah. so i wish yeah. let slug take both the healing potions like one for now and one for later yeah. oh. he knows he likes loot <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so lesser healing potion is 1d8 <clears throat> healing if you wanted to use it. And for your knowledge, um, unlike in D&D where a long rest gets you back up to full HP, um, in uh, Pathfinder it gives you HP back equal to... Um, oh, I was literally just reading it. You regain hit points equal to your constitution modifier times by your level. But obviously you guys are level 1, so it would just be your constitution modifier to a minimum of 1. This slug probably wants one now, right? We Might be a good idea. Do a medicine check on him for now. Let's see how much that gets him. Totally oh. good. And <laughs> just hope you don't <laughs> fuck it up. Yep. If you have hero points, might be good. I don't. I don't. <laughs> Is slug trained in medicine? Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> I think anyone is. <laughs> Excellent planning. I imagine Henry probably was. Do, um, do the healer's tools have like a limit on how many times you can use them? Um, I don't think so. Healers. So you, you can keep trying every hour. Um, but if you crit fail, obviously it does hurt slug. Necessary for medicine checks. If you. Uh, where are your healers? Blah, blah. Yeah, it doesn't have charges. Nope, just keep using it. Mm, cool. Uh, yeah, Lorcor just comes along with a big bandage in his hand, not really knowing what to do. But, <clears throat> I think yeah, the mother um... says to wrap it round. That's about right. <laughs> mm, like this. Mm. Let's see how good he does. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yeah, DC 15. It's out of my hands. Yeah. How'd we do? 12. Okay, so that's a failure, which is fine. Nothing happens. An hour passes before you can do it again. But you don't hurt him or anything. Hmm. Slug's just draped in bandage. Yeah, yeah like a look mummy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Halloween mummy costume. Is right, it working? I feel terrible. Still. It's not working. You probably have one of those potions, lad. 
Just in case, eh? There's more of these bastards out there. But I only just got this potion. But we, you have two. You can have one now and one, you can keep one for your stash. Uh, all right. I shall drink a potion then. 1d8 healing. Hey, spitter. You glug it down. Six. Very respectable. Six HP back to you. And yeah, as you... Well done. Bulk 16. Oh, because you've got 16. I think you want bulk... They they have... So in, um, in Pathfinder, things either have negligible bulk, light bulk, or a number. Um, the seeds would have negligible bulk, so it um, it won't affect you whatsoever. But yeah, each one does a, an HP, so you could use those to top yourself up. But obviously, again, it's using up resources. Yeah, just keep them stashed. Keep them stashed. Yeah. Cool. Oh. Is it back to bed then? Yeah. Sorry. Back, back to bed. To the monkey skin. <laughs> what is this monkey skin? Very comfortable monkey skin. It's slimy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's all the Smoke flows out of the tent. Mm. <laughs> Lawful just brings it back in. Getting a beautiful relationship. Cool. <laughs> Yeah, uh, this time the night passes, whether it's for the grizzly trophies or um, just by chance, you are not troubled again. You may all count as having a long rest, do your daily preparations, get spell slots back if you spent them, um, and slug you regain uh, whatever your constitution modifier is in HP. So two, two HP back. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Are we setting off again? Yeah. Yeah, everyone's got um, plenty of food and everything. I'm going to eat it. Okay. Very nice. Have a little seed. Gives you an HP and also sustains you for the day. So healthy now. <laughs> Fantastic. So you head on once more. I would like another survival check from Lorco Oli Bim. Or whoever's leading. Oh yeah, baby. Oh my god. Okay. With the critical success there, um, Lorcor, you can see early on that the uh, undergrowth is beginning to thin as you're approaching uh, the edge of this area where you know the ruined tower is ahead. Mm. You guide your companions to a higher vantage point so that you can all now see from above um this area here there are three large pools of water the water looks very still you can see some small animals perhaps little birds dipping their heads in the water at the edge and drinking from it um the the water itself looks very tranquil uh, and still in the middle is a large ruined tower the tower itself, or what's left of it, can only really have two, maybe three floors still inside. It looks like it was very impressive in its day, but is now just surrounded by crumbled rubble. In amongst the rubble, though, from your vantage point that you've led your companions to, you can see a number of exiled Sari beginning their own daily preparations. You can see... Um, uh, little draped tents made out of leathers and hides many propped up between different areas of, of ruins it looks like there's quite a few exiled sari here you'd estimate from this distance maybe something like 30 exiled sari oh, in total God. yeah there's a lot um you also notice that there is the swamp swamp area that you've heard so much about off to the southwest seems to be encroaching more and more and has even overtaken one of these pools that now instead of its still blue surface instead is a thick mud-like texture that seems to bubble and writhe the swamp um 
though not moving to your eyes, it's not expanding that quickly, you can see how rapid its advancement has been by the fact that it's it ends abruptly. Where the edge of the swamp ends, there's like fresh, healthy grass next to it. But as soon as you cross into the swamp, it's wilted plants and thick slime. Everything seems to hang in a dense mist and slime. Reminds you of your dream of a few nights ago. Um, but with your critical success, you notice another thing. Directly to your south, round about here, about two, three hundred um, <clears throat> feet, maybe more. Um, let's call it half a mile, about half a mile into the, the undergrowth from the opening, so about here-ish. It looks like there's a, a camp, an exile sari mm -hmm. camp. Only five, four, five uh, sari are there, um, beginning their day, and you notice that there are a number of shoddily constructed wooden cages. Um, from this distance, you can't see exactly what's in those cages, but some are big, some are small. But it looks like there's a number of, of sari there, mm. a much more approachable number. Yeah, Does this is what, like... with that excellent roll. Oh. Sorry, go ahead. Um, does it look like if we were to hmm, maybe eat some heads of those five people, uh, would they? Would that alert? How close are we to the other lot? Um, in unless they got away and mm -hmm. ran, no. If they shouted, it's not close enough to be heard. You're okay. pretty confident of that. Hmm. Hmm. Oh. Well, we sent here just to investigate the tower. Yeah, Pushkin said, um, we, the, the people of New Quivershank, we've never found out what, why the exiled Sari stick with that tower. Um, maybe there's something powerful there or, or interesting or useful. Maybe the exiled Sari themselves could be manipulated or allied with <laughs> or, um, Whatever you like, but it, this is a, a nearby point of interest that Pushkin thought would be useful as a as starting point. Hmm. If Lorco told um, uh, Tiberius Sigla, I feel like we should um, check out the camp. Um, yes, there's I... only five of them. Take the small number and then kill the big. When are we going to even need to go over there first? He's got a lot. <laughs> yes. Hmm. Maybe we should sneak up on our camp, see if we can see anything else. Kind of looks over to Slug. Are you any good at sneaking? Yeah. Hmm. Kind of looks over to Tiberius. Are you? I like to think I'm a super sleuth, as it were. But you know, <laughs> had a lot of experience hiding from those children in the tower. Then we corner them, block them from their allies, and get them. Sounds good to me. Yeah, let's go sneak okay. on by. Lorcor's gonna do his um, sneaky thing as well, camouflagey thing. Oh, amazing! Very good. Let me just read because I know there's a follow the expert action, but it might not. How am I exploring? Oh, they have to be an expert. Okay. Okay. That's why I was thinking it's not going to come up at this level. Cool. Um, if we are sneaking up, then I will need everyone to roll stealth checks as you try and avoid notice. Um, so, um, I don't know how it works. Your, um, your speciality thing. Mm. Let's have a little look-see. Like what's a what's a circumstance bonus? What's that? 
Oh, it, just think of it as a bonus. The reason they have different names is that they're um, you can't stack two of the same type of bonus on top of each other, but that doesn't make any difference right now. Okay. So yeah, if it gives you like a plus two or a plus four or whatever, just add it straight on. Cool. Oh, gonna need it. Ooh. Roughly, you can use the map. He's, he's trying to control his rage. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna kill him! <laughs> and then uh, a stealth check from Slug, please. Okay, interesting. So, that is against that. <clears throat> Okay, so you move down through the underbrush um, towards your destination. You've got a clear idea um, of where it is, and you're approaching it um, from the north, kind of northwest. Um, the stealth check only really comes into play in terms of your final approach. How are you wanting to um, deal with the camp? So to give you an idea... What I'm going to do is, I'm going to move you over to the map, but because you don't yet know the details, I'm going to chuck tokens on the GM layer. It is the daytime, so I'm um, going to turn the dynamic lighting off here. Lawcore does kind of want to do sort of like a like an like a ambushy type thing, mm -hmm. where he will be like in wait and have like the other two, try and lure them over to him. Very cool. But, I don't know. Is he so, that plan? <laughs> I've, dra I've dragged you on. <laughs> I've dragged you on. Um, this is essentially what you would have seen from afar. So this is the idea of the layout that you would be aware of. Mm. It's They've built the cages in and around a central thicket. Um, this area in the middle is very thick with vegetation bound vines and things like that and so is vision blocking so that could come into your plan mm. so if someone was stood uh, to the south of it they wouldn't be able to see someone uh, over to the north um, um. The, the whole thing is surrounded by the the jungle so you can loop around um come at it from different angles if you like there's the tent itself and seemingly an area where the the sari might sleep but it is the daytime now mm. that you're you're going ahead and there's the three cages there's a long one a large um one and then a, a smaller one over to, on the east side is there anything in them um so with your stealth checks as they are I will say Tiberius would be able to do a little bit of a scout um, if he wanted to. So you could do a perception check for me. Oh, that's pretty clutch. Okay. As you move around and scout out the area, Tiberius, you do see what's inside these cages. I will also say you notice these cages do not look amazingly secure. Basic branches um, wrapped up with leather cord and um, basic like vines and uh, woven ropes. The longer cage at the top houses a vicious looking black panther. Large and well muscled. This creature is clearly in its prime. Uh, a great trophy for these hunters, and it paces back and forth inside its cage with barely concealed ferocity. The cage on the right-hand side, or the east, has a very familiar sight inside. A great number of monkeys jump around inside the cage and rattle their bars as they are clearly unhappy, having been captured and placed inside this cage here. The cage in the bottom left is different. There are two humanoids inside, and you can't make out great details. And so we have 
some placeholder tokens there, but there are clearly two adult humanoids inside. Now, I don't know. I know Natalie's here now. Mm, not really. Ish. Not really. <laughs> not so really. yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, we'll leave that. Two people are inside that cage. But yes, a vicious looking black panther, a swarm of monkeys, and two people. Uh, and with the nat 20, I said this was clutch, you get a complete read on the kind of current um, activities of the exari, the exiled sari themselves. One is feeding the monkeys, one is tormenting the two humanoids, clearly saying horrible things. One is cooking up a meal at the campfire, and with the nat 20, you see there are two currently resting inside the large tent. Mm, nice. Mm. So yeah, with that nat 20, you get a complete read, Tiberius, as you make your way stealthily amongst the undergrowth. You have been unnoticed, and you've got a complete read on everything set up here. Tiberius would to get back like he'd relay the information and he'd say maybe what we should try and do is release the panther so cause a bit of a distraction and then when they're fighting it surprise them ourselves <clears throat> and kill the panther when it turns on us okay Who's gonna release it? I'm not going near the panther. <laughs> I'll release it. <laughs> the map is as it is. So I would say you'd know that the undergrowth extends quite far towards the panther's cage over here. <laughs> okay. If someone um, were to have a an invisible hand of some kind. Wait, I've got, I've Could got maybe something. Do got unseen servant. Oh! Mm, nice. Could be a thing. Could be a thing. Just paste it. So. Um, medium mindless. Mm-hmm. Move and use interact actions to do things. Fetch objects, open, unstuck, or unlock doors, or chairs and clean. Yeah. Tiberius, uh, I could sneak over there, use my servant, who's unseen, and maybe when I do that, you two could make a dash for the cages, try and get it open. So we've got a quite a few things on our side. <sighs> Beasts aren't usually on anyone's particular side. Well, if I try and uh, hide in the bushes, maybe it'll go for Vasari instead of me. If I, if I make a loud noise towards him or something. Yeah. Yeah, you, you can see the cages aren't fastened with any kinds of locks. It's literally just a, a tied um, piece of leather cord, which could be easily manipulated by the, your unseen servant. Mm, yes. So, if, so Tiberius is going to go over here, I assume, over. He's going to try and sneak there. He's going to try and use his servant to open it. Mm. And he's probably going to make a sound over here near the monkey, so the monkeys get agitated. Yeah. So the panther goes towards them. Okay. And then that'll so That's the plan. I'm not sure it's good. Draw <laughs> these people to over there as well. Just trying to think of where to put myself. Maybe. If a panther comes out, then I imagine there's going to be a lot of noise, and when the monkey starts screaming, these guys might be like, oh shit, and go over there. I don't know. Yeah, I'm just thinking whether or not, like, when everyone starts moving over there, to, like, just come around here and open this door. Yeah, that, that's a good idea. Slug could do that. Yeah. Yeah, that, that cage is um, more heavily... I mean, it's not intricate. It's like a big wooden bar across it. Something mm. you could deal with easily, Lawcore. Okay. But maybe not slug. 
maybe not Slug, no. Slug's a bit hurt, so he yeah. can stay towards the back. Yeah, okay. Well, you you go over there then. I think Lorca will probably try and, like, when they're distracted, like, come over here. And just push over here, maybe? Yeah, the un the undergrowth is heavy, and the, the this is a clearing in the jungle. So you can easily, like, go back 50 feet or 100 feet to make sure you're not heard, mm -hmm. move around, come closer from a different angle. Yeah. You're only up here because this is where you approached from originally. Mm. He also kind of wants to be on this side as well because that way is where the rest of them are. Yeah. And the panther. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a plan then. Lorca's going to make his way over to this bush side over here then. Yeah. Do you want to drag yourselves to where you would be? Ooh. With the plan? What Slug's thinking? Mm, don't really want to be left of my aim. Yeah, it's quite scary. Hmm, right over here. Go. Yeah, with a little bit of distance. Okay. Well. With yourselves in position surrounding this Sari encampment, them going about their, their day completely unaware of what's going on. The cages, the panther, padding back and forth. Tiberius, you begin your incantation to summon your unseen servant. Yes. Very good. Within the, the brush, you see the shimmering outline of your servant, which immediately disappears, completely unseen. It follows your instructions. Yeah. And you tell it to open the cage. Yeah, but however that works with the vines. No, it, it will work absolutely fine. The unseen servant walks out, across, you see it as the barest shimmer in the air, um, walks up to the cage, moves around to this side. He'd also tell the servant to like bang some of the trees this way once it's done its job fantastic okay walks up to the binds begins to unravel them and i think seeing as <laughs> we need <laughs> we need natalie's new character to come into play i think we'll call it there for tonight if that's all right with people yeah that's fine. Nice. Because we're definitely going to go into initiative order for the Unseen Servant doing oh. stuff. But I love this. It's uh, pretty full, pretty fun. I, I think it's pretty... When you said you got Unseen <laughs> Servant, I was like, oh damn, this could be pretty awesome. Because yeah, I was looking forward to seeing who was like, right, I'm going to go let the panther out. <laughs> and the panther's just there like, hello! <laughs> yep. Well, um, he was. Oh, initially, I was thinking he'd try and jump up on the cage. So, yeah. mm. well, if Lorca had opened the, opened the cage with the panther, I was thinking that he could like pick the panther up and just throw it like, in this direction <laughs> over here. <Yeah>. <laughs> Amazing! <laughs> I love it. Yeah, the panther is as I hope I as ho hope I explained it through imagery is nasty. Yeah. You don't want that panther attacking you. Attacking sorry though. Mm, could be pretty good. <clears throat> right. When the monkeys kick off, that should draw them all over there. Oh, definitely. I, if it well, if the panther doesn't make a beeline for Tiberius, and then <laughs> yeah. uh, well, kind of fucked. I have to think about how smelly Tiberius is. Oh god. Probably the least smelly out of all of us, right? <laughs> Yes, Lorca. <laughs> Lorca just smells of blood. blood. <laughs> That's what Panthers yeah. love. <laughs> Amazing. Right, well. Do we get any XP? Oh, oh yeah. god, I completely point. forgot. Absolutely you do. So, the Glowing Seeds encounter. I actually need to update the XP on that because I added the swarm of monkey monkey monkeys. So we had three normal monkeys, that was 60, which is actually 80. And then 
No. 60. And then swarm of monkeys. Swarm. Monkey swarm. My immediate favorite creature. Um, is actually full of you. God, I love how easy this is to work out. It's actually amazing. So, level plus one. It's 60 XP, so that's 120. And then we had the three sorry. Oh, no, wait, because I'm meant to do it in the original way. Sorry. Right, so... Ba, 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 ba. The monkeys themselves. <clears throat> 20, 20, 20 is 60. Why can't I do basic maths? Plus 60 is 120. Three players. So we take... Adjustment. One, so it was one twenty. Yes, that was one twenty. And then let's get some. You actually got a lot. You got two hundred and forty XP. So four hundred and forty. Yeah, you're almost halfway to level two. Nice. Cool. Nice, nice, nice. Cool, cool, cool. Well, what? What? Sorry, I forgot to listen. What? <laughs> Up to 440 XP. So you can put it on your character sheet. 440? 440 total. It feels like you can do a lot more at level 1. Some of the stuff was a bit... We might have just whacked you. But those guys did miss a lot, I suppose. Yeah. They missed! I, I was like not yeah. dying in one hit. Yeah, it's nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I mean, we're up to 440, or oh, that was 440 that we've got. You you are up to 440 now. Nice. So you're almost halfway to level 2. And yeah, I, I completely agree. I think the level 1 experience is much better. Don't know how I feel about the level 0 thing. We'll see how that is when you guys go into the, the cave in Lumen. Um, <laughs> but we're, you're zooming towards uh, level 1 in that anyway. So yeah. see how it works out. Wanted to try it. We'll see how we feel once we've yeah. done it. But yeah, really well done. That was a super fun session, guys. Yeah. Some clutch rolls, That's some cool combat. decisions. The the clarity of the image in my mind of Slug just walking around picking up seeds, whilst in the <laughs> like behind him in the background is Lawcore just like wrestling with all these monkeys on him, just like Arrah! throwing them off, and then Tiberius running around sorting stuff out. Kind of reminds me of that initial scene in the uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Is it two? <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Slugs just boogie in for his seats. <laughs> Living his best life. Yeah. 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 Lawcore is fucking terrifying. Yeah. It's actually so cool as the DM just being like seeing your players characters have such like clear roles and power like straight away <laughs> the barbarian is so cool but it's just like i'm gonna fucking kill you <laughs> but without the like automatic uber tankiness that you get in with the region 5e <laughs> yeah but we'll see so far minus one ac hasn't been a big detriment <laughs> no yeah i think I think the that obviously the damage does fall off eventually, and I don't think it scales. So we're gonna see how that goes. The like, rage damage. Just the damage in general. Like, I can't upgrade my weapon. All I can use is. Oh no! Uh, the way we do that is there's an item called. Although yeah, it's interesting to think how it works with your jaws. Yeah. But like That's with so... monks or or anyone that does. Um, unarmed attacks you have they're called hand wraps of mighty blows uh. <laughs> essentially so the way the damage scales with martial char characters in um, pathfinder is you get runes on your uh, weapons and they increase the number of dice you actually hit with so your jaws would stop. Is it a D8 you roll for your jaws or D6? Uh, D10 for the jaws because it's a rage oh. specific thing so cool. 
Um, so if you got a rune of striking on to like upgrade your jaws or whatever, um, you roll two d10 instead of one d10, and then you get a greater rune and you're rolling three d10. So it like it upgrades that way. Okay. Just imagine him rep- like carving a rune into teeth and then somehow <laughs> putting them in his mouth. I mean, that's fucking <laughs> awesome. Let's be honest. Uh, well, isn't it crocodiles where they just replace their teeth all the time? So you just take, just pull one out and just replace it with a rune teeth. <laughs> so cool. <laughs> rune teeth, ruined fangs. So yeah, we just do it that way. Okay, um, cool. And that that happens level four-ish, five-ish, I think is when it's meant to happen for martial classes. Hmm. You start upgrading like that. So yeah, it does scale as you go along. Yeah, I assume that relies on like finding these runes then. Yeah. Uh, the yes, but that's my role as the DM to make sure that you guys have access to it. Pathfinder's very clear. Like, it gives the DM really clear guidance on like, you should try and spread out this much treasure for your characters at level one, level two, and like this many permanent magic items, this mm. many temporary like you saw you got your potions from the guys um so yeah we'll see how it goes but yeah you definitely will scale that's just so cool it's just so cool that like if anyone else is surprised they have to be like oh shit dip my crossbow out load it up and law course just there like yes <laughs> 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 yeah that, that is one of the, the better things about the that essentially subclass is what it is. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Is, you're not actually allowed to use weapons. I think it's only while you're raging, but you're not if oh. I like use an axe, like it's against the whatever it is, the anthem of the, the Yes, you know? the like code of it. Yeah. Interesting. Not just think for, just forget how to use weapons when you rage. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just wanna yeah. feel the blood on my claws and my fangs. <laughs> yeah. Um, but if if I wasn't a like, lizard folk and I didn't pick the claws, he wouldn't have claws. He'd just have to use another weapon or punch stuff. Oh, yeah. interesting. I pick claws, but it's the cool. jaws that you got from because yeah. yeah, you went like crocodile style. Yeah. Oh, jaws, so yeah. cool. And then so then tail whip is another feat that I added as well. So. Oh yes. So I got te- a rage tail whip, which is with the well, I can't remember what we said it was now, with the thing that knocks you down. Oh, the trip, yeah. Yeah, so I added that for the rage one, but I also had a, a feat for the normal one as well. Oh, very cool. Yeah, That's awesome. I think I think I did. I can't remember now. I've got them yeah. both somehow. It's really cool. I'm glad we got to see inspire courage on the bard as well. That uh, is such a powerful thing. Such a like, mm, underrated thing. Yeah. And at later levels, you can get inspired defense and all this other stuff. Really, really cool. Bards are such a like team support. Can um, we see some more but... slug spells? Yeah, mm-hmm. slugs slow playing yeah. his hand. Really slow, yeah. I fucking mm-hmm. loved the um the mage hand to get the seeds out of the trees, though. Yeah. Just like, well, I'm from... not climbing up there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It's just like <laughs> lazy teenager. <laughs> <laughs> Magical powers. Provisional name: the monkey murderers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, murder much more than monkeys. So, Gary, <laughs> genuinely scared for Krez, wherever she might be. If she's alone. An old lady. She can't fight back anyway. Old lizard folk. Right. right. Thank you, everyone. Thank, Thank you, guys. You, I hope Thank you feel you. better soon, George. Bye. Bye.